Okay. All right, I think we might be live, but let me hold on a second and make sure that we're live. If you're there and you can hear us, tell us hello. And uh, once I know for sure this is working, we'll see when we can get started. It should be working on YouTube. Hello. And, uh, oh, once perfect. I know for sure okay. this is working. All right, there's my echo. All right, I muted it. All right, hello, everybody. I'm Robert Breaker, and I've got my guest with me today, Fabriel. You all should know him a couple of months. It's been almost a month ago now we did a, a video together. And you give a little of your testimony. We talked about a lot of things. And today we want to talk about why the King James Bible. We're going to look at problems with new versions of the Bible. And you've got quite a list there. And yeah. if you actually read your Bible, you cannot help but see that new versions of the Bible are perversions of the Bible. They have so many errors, so many mistakes, so many problems. And if you keep with the King James, you don't have those problems. Many of them are attacks on the deity of Christ. A lot of your uh, modern day Christians are what I like to call milksop Christians. They yeah. don't have very much doctrine and they have a watered down version of the Bible. And uh, so when they go to the Bible, they say silly, most outrageous statements that nobody who actually studies the Bible could ever say, which That's makes right. me wonder, do they even study the Bible? But they say, well, all versions are the same and they're all the same. Well, before we get to and show you the outright evil in new versions of the bible i don't know any other way to say it uh, yeah. we need to show you what the bible says about itself and things like that and then we're going to get into examples of in the bible i've got my kjv tie on uh 1611 2011 400 years of king james bible so what i want to do is i want to go through and um talk about why the king james because unless you have a king james you do not have the perfect pure word of god you have a different version that comes from different texts that have been messed with. In the Old Testament, the prophets would stand up and say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. And they knew what God said, and they said it. Today, in many pulpits, men will stand up and say, well, God might have said, but we're not sure because we don't have the, the true uh, text. And we're not sure if this is actually in the older manuscripts. And so we don't. So it's possible that God might have perhaps said this. Because my version says this. That's not, see, God can never make an error and God cannot lie. And new versions of the Bible have lies in them. So if it's not of God, who is it from? So I want to get started today while sharing the screen. I want to give you a, a bunch of verses. And I want to, first of all, start out with the scripture here. And Paul the Apostle ran into a bunch of folks. Yep. And Paul the Apostle ran into some people in Athens the center of so-called culture, actually the center of philosophy. And uh, when he ran into them, this is what they were like. This is what our modern new age is like, the new world and actually modern Christianity. They don't care for the old ways. They want something new. And we read here, it says, for all the Athenians and strangers, let me say, nope, that's as big as I can get it. No, nope, that's smaller. So for all the Athenians and strangers which were there, spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. And that's what people today have been brainwashed into thinking like and being like is, oh, have you got the new iPhone yet? Oh, did you see the new this? Hey, the, hey, the new. And it's all about something new. But yeah. is that what the Bible teaches? Is it about to be or is it supposed to be all about something new? A lot of times when something new comes along, it's changed. Yeah. And you remember some guy, I won't say his name, who came along and said, we want to fundamentally change the United States of America. Remember, remember that um, change isn't always good. Matter of fact, the devil wants change, and that's what he tries to do. So we should never try to go by something new, <clears throat> new King James Bible. You know, no, no, I don't want the new one. I'll stick with the old one. Thank you very much. Because the Bible says, remove not the ancient landmark, which thy fathers have set. God gave us a book, King James Bible. Amen. In, in the right time in history, the Philadelphia Church Age period, see our video on, on uh, um, Revelation that I just recently did. And um, when you look at that and you see that, you can't help but, but see um, that the King James came in the right time and there was more revival from the King James Bible than any other time in history. The most sold book in history is the King James 
Bible. Now, a lot of your so-called uh, modern scholars, if you will, um, they don't believe the King James Bible. They're all, oh, no, we found newer texts, or, or they claim they're older texts when they're not. And they're, oh, they're, they're the better ones and all this. And what they'll do is they'll tell you, no, there's no such thing as a pure Bible. It's only a translation. But can you have a translation that's, that's good? Well, what's interesting is the word translation yep. translated shows up three times in the King James Bible. And every time that something is translated, it's always better than the original. <laughs> Here's one example. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. What did he do? He got raptured. So the translation, when he got translated, he was better off than he was before. Now, let me show you two other places. I think it's translated is how it says it. But let's look that up. So uh, people out there always say silly things like, no, there's. There's no such thing as, as, a, as a reliable translation, you know, or, or no. Th what they'll say is they'll say, uh, my Bible's not perfect. It's just a reliable translation. Because, but they'll say a translation can never be perfect. And yet in the Bible, uh, when we see the word translate or translated or translation, it's three times. It's 2 Samuel 3.10, which we yep. have here to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and to set up the throne of David over Israel. So there's one. The second time translate translated is in the Bible is in Colossians 1 13 who delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And then the other one is here by faith. Enoch was translated. So I don't buy this garbage that a translation can't be better than an original. Yeah. Because in the Bible, a translation, when something's translated, it's better than it was before. I'm just throwing that out there. Now, um, you recently ran into, you were telling me, of people that are going around saying, no, the King James Bible is not perfect, and only the originals yeah. are perfect, and all this stuff. Yeah. But that doesn't line up with the Bible. It, it uh, never ceases to amaze me how often people say things that don't line up with the Bible. It's like, have they ever read it? That's right. <laughs> Psalms 12, 6, and 7. God is the one who gave us his word, the Bible. Okay, The Bible is God's word. And he said he's not only going to give it to us inspired, he said he would also preserve it. So to go around as a Christian and say, well, we don't know for sure if we have the true word of God. You're calling God a liar because you're saying God has not preserved his word. Psalms 12, 6 and 7 in the King James Bible. Now, what's crazy to me is new version. She even changed this. Mm. They, you know, many people will say no new version of the Bible changes any doctrine of the faith. Liar. Amen. That's right. They change many doctrines. And we're going to look at many of those verses today where they do change doctrine. But here's one doctrine. It says the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. If something is purified, doesn't that make it better than it was That's before? Right. It's made pure. So the Bible went through seven different languages. It started in Hebrew and then it went through other languages. It's the seventh language is English. I find that amazing. And yep. they have a promise in Psalms 12, 7, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them. That's preservation. Okay. Inspiration without preservation is nothing. That's right. It says thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. New versions of the Bible change that and they have them preserving the generation forever, not the words. <laughs> is David still alive today? No. I mean, they, they change everything and they mess doctrine. So this is the wonderful doctrine of preservation. And in the Bible, um, God preserved his words. Now, you think the devil likes that? Do you think the devil loves it when God preserves his words? No, not at all. And so as soon as the Bible was coming out, the devil was changing it. And as we go to the scriptures, we find even Paul the apostle saying in his day, there were some people that messed with the Bible. So that makes you wonder, well, how do we know which Bible's the right one? A lot of people get saved and they see all these different versions of the Bible. And they say, well, which one's the right one? Well, that's when you have to study. The Bible says yeah. we're supposed to study. But look at what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 2, 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. So Paul says that there were some people corrupting the word of God. They were changing the Bible. And he said there were many of them. Who was that? So you have two lines of text. You have the true Bible text, 
of the perfect preserved word of God, and you have a perverted line of text that claim to be Bible text. Where do they come from? And who's the one behind the changing and corrupting the Bible? Well, that was the ancient Gnostics. And much of what they did, they did in Egypt. And their text, the corrupt text, is called the Alexandrian text. Let me show you another verse real quick. And, and so I want to get to the Gnostics. I want to explain real quick who they are, because when we get to this, and and Fabriel's going to show us a bunch of verses. I'm trying to just set up for him so he can run with this, because he's done exhaustive studies as well as I. And we're going to show you the new versions of the Bible and how they do this. They handle the word of God deceitfully. But it says here, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Paul says that's our ministry. So part of a true Christian's ministry is doing what? Handling the word of God correctly. Amen. Telling you which is the right Bible and why. Because there are people out there that handle the word of God deceitfully and do not teach the truth. They lie. And a lot of people in so-called Christianity have lied and turned people to other versions that are perversions of the Bible, that are corrupted versions of the Bible from the corrupt text. So in the early church, when it started, in came the Gnostics. And the Gnostics were the ones that began to take the Bible and say, well, I don't like that. And they change it. And one of the things they hated was the fact that Jesus Christ is God. So they would change things that said Jesus was God. And we're going to see that today. They believe Jesus was just like a, a, a begotten son of God or like one of the ancient fallen angels, the gods of, of paganism. That's what they thought Jesus was. So when you get a Bible that has Gnostic influence in it, repeatedly you find attacks against the deity of Christ. And yep. new versions of the Bible, all new versions of the Bible, guess what? They attack the deity of Christ. That's right. So the Gnostics, their center was in Alexandria. Now, in your modern so-called so Bible schools today, they love the Alexandrian text, and they try to tell you that those are the best texts, and those are the right texts. That doesn't make sense because the Bible was originally written Old Testament in Hebrew, New Testament in Greek. Where would you go to find the Bible preserved from where it came from? Where is the fountain of where the Bible came from? In Antioch. Hebrew, Jerusalem. Yeah. In the New Testament, Antioch of Syria. Yeah. But modern day, now here's the thing. We have been lied to. For so long, we're fed up with it. People all over the world are learning. We're being lied to by health officials. We're being lied to by religion. We're being lied to by our governments. We're being. It's time that people woke up to the fact that we're being lied to by Bible scholars. And they are lying to us and telling us that the better texts are the ones they say is better. But those aren't the better texts. Those are the Gnostic texts. And the Gnostic texts have their roots in Alexandria, Egypt. And it's from those Gnostic texts that all new versions of the Bible come from. And they don't want Hebrew and Greek. They want the Old Testament in Greek, not Hebrew. So they go to what they call the LXX, which is a version that's full of errors and mistakes. And also called the Septuagint. <laughs> Reminds me of septic. That's when something's corrupt. <laughs> anyway, uh, and the New Testament, they don't want the Texas Receptus from the Byzantine Empire, where the Antioch was, they want a Texas, uh, they want the uh, critical Greek text, which comes from and is based upon the Vaticanus and Sinaiticus Alexandrian text. So anybody that is pro-Alexandrian is someone that has a false perverted Bible. Yeah. All new versions of the Bible come from the Alexandrian, Alexandrian text, all of them. That's why they have errors and mistakes. Now, the Catholics came along, and uh, around 400, Jerome put out the Latin Vulgate. And what they try to teach today is that the Catholic Church has the true Bible and mm. has preserved the true Bible for us today. That's what they try to teach us. And that's not at all true. <laughs> when you study it out, you find out that the Catholic Church has taken the Alexandrian Gnostic text and mixed it in with the true text. And that's why the Catholic Bible is full of errors and mistakes. That's now, you say, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. You know what this is? This is the Spanish Bible from uh, 1569 of Casiodoro de Reina. In the very beginning of this, he, he was a monk in Spain who um, studied Hebrew and Greek, and he studied the Latin text. Now, God didn't give us the Bible in Latin. Now, there was a good Latin text, but then there was the Catholic Latin text, which is, is the bad one. 
And as you're going through here and you're reading the preface of this Bible, he tells us that the um, Latin Vulgate is full of errors. Yeah. Let's see if I can find that for you, because I want you to see that. And that's when the Reformation came. That's why many people like Erasmus and others said, oh, boy, the, the Latin Bible is wrong. It doesn't read with the, the Greek text. It's receptus out of it. Who changed the Bible? And it yeah. all points back to the Egyptian Alexandrian corrupt Gnostic text. So bear with me as I try to find this here. I want to read this to you. And I want you to see that most Bible schools today are preaching the propagated lie rather than the Bible about the pure, rather than the truth about the pure Bible. And I got to find this here. It says the many errors. So I want you to see this here. Um, I have to read in Spanish and think in Spanish here for a second. So let me see if I can find this here. Um, yeah. Well, I wish I had it already, the page marked for you so I could show you to this. No se puede negar. I remember what it says. It's just finding it in the text. Yeah. But I'm going to give you as much evidence as I can. Yeah. All right. I'll try to find it here. You got go ahead and say something, to add to this or whatever. Yeah. I get this yeah. because, you know. well, and Vulgate is filled with mistakes. Catholics, you know, I, I used to be Catholic. Again, it's tradition plus scripture, right? It's just what man says, what man has passed down, and usually contradicts the scripture all the time. So sometimes in a land Vulgate, or I think it's also in a land Vulgate, they change, I think, Genesis 3:15. Where she, where where it talks about the prophecy of the serpent, uh, uh, the seed crushing the serpent, and some of the Catholic Bibles they change it to uh, uh, she will crush the serpent's uh, head. Okay, I mean, so here it is, and I mean, you don't read Spanish, you're not gonna see what I'm presenting to you here, which it's on this side, bottom of this page, top of this page, and it says, and I'm translating. When it comes to the old Latin translation, the Latin Vulgate. That is in common use, although its authority is by its age great. They're saying because it's the oldest version, that's why people say it's the most authoritative. It, it is not, no one can excuse the many errors that it has. The many yeah. errors that the Latin Catholic Bible has. Departing many times from the Hebrew text. Others adding, others trans changing or transposing in other places that, that it is not to be it shouldn't be but he says you can't deny that so he's saying you cannot deny that the that the latin vulgate and this and for this reason they put him um on the the list of of uh, for, forbidden books they tried to kill this man because yep. he told the truth spanish inquisition tried to kill him i'm sure i can show you the word so you'll see it if you don't speak spanish at least you'll see this word there's muchos hierros. Hierro is um, error in old Spanish. Los hierros. Do you see the word hierros there? Yeah. So here is a testimony of a true Christian, one who had to flee for his life from the Spanish Inquisition, who said, I read the Latin Vulgate, and it's full of errors and mistakes. Yeah. Today, they try to tell us that the Latin Vulgate is the closest to the originals. <laughs> and you can't believe that if you study it and find it and learn it for yourself. So you have the Texas Receptus New Testament, mm -hmm. and the Texas Receptus is what they found in the 1500s when they went to the Byzantine Empire close to Antioch and found over 5,000 Greek uh, texts of the New Testament. And they agreed with each other, 95, 98, something like that percent. And they put it together and they said, wow, this is what the original said. This is the true word of God. And the Catholics are the ones that had it wrong. Mm -hmm. And this is when Reformation, this is when revival came, when they found the true Bible. Now, that didn't mean it didn't exist before that. There were groups out there that did have it. The Waldensens, the Albigensens, yep. the, the Lawlers, the Cathari, the, all these kinds. And they were always persecuted by the Catholic Church, and their works were burned. That's why it's very hard today to find their text. There's actually the old Latin text that was before the Vulgate. 
that is that is very close to the King James. So you go and you look at the Texas Receptus. Here's my copy of the Texas Receptus in Greek. Okay, this is where the King James Bible comes from in the New Testament. This is the pure word of God, if you will, as close as you can get it from the Greek text. All new versions of the Bible today do not come from the Texas Receptus. That's right. Every single translation today comes from this Greek New Testament, which is Novum Testamentum Graeci, the Nestle Allen. The mm. Nestle Allen text comes from the Westcott and Hort text. Westcott yeah. and Hort put out their critical New Testament in 1881. They said, we hate the King James Bible and we hate the Texas Receptus. And they were closet Catholics who loved Mary. And they said, we want people to get an English Bible closer to the one that's the Catholic Church Bible. Mm. They didn't care about having the true word of God. So they went through and they nitpicked and they came together to put forth what they called the Westcott and Hort text. The Nestle Allen is based upon the Westcott and Hort text. This yeah. is their Nestle Allen. All right. Listen to what I'm saying. Every new version, MEV, NKJV, NIV, ASV, NASB, QP, QRST, whatever, they all were translated from the corrupt, critical, Catholic, Gnostic text. That's this right. This is it right here. And when you open it up and you begin to read it, it tells you who did it. And look what it says. Well, first of all, it says the text is based on the work of the great textual critics of the 19th century, Westcott and Hort. Mm. Were they great? When you begin to study these men, they were the original trans movement. They were transvestites. They wore women's clothes. Yeah. They also practiced communion with devils and other things. And you don't get this in Bible schools because they want you to think, no, this is the better version. It's not the better version. Look what it says right here that this version was produced by. Look at this. Okay, you can pause this and read it. I'll read it to you now. But it says, the text shared by these two editions was adopted internationally by Bible societies. And following an agreement between the Vatican, that's where the Pope is, and the United Bible Societies, it has served as the basis for new translations and for revisions made under their supervision. So who is behind new versions of the Bible? The Vatican, the Pope, right. the ones that killed true Christians who wanted the pure word of God. And so all new versions try to get you back to the corrupt Latin Vulgate. Now, wait till I read the rest of this. I'm going to read right down here what these people who put this together say. Now, most of your so-called Bible scholars, they'll tell you, well, we go by the critical text because we think it's the best. Do you believe it is the perfect word of God? No, they will never say that. This is what they say. Quote, Talking about this translation, this critical Greek text, yeah. it is not to be considered as definitive, but as a stimulus to further efforts toward defining and verifying the text of the New Testament. Mm. So we do not believe that this is the pure, inspired, inerrant word of God, and you should never take any translation from it as definitive. Mm. So if you use any other Bible than the King James, it comes from this. And they say, we don't even believe this is what God said. It's a text. It's a working text. And what we're doing is going through and nitpicking and thinking, well, I think maybe it should say this. And that's why it's called the critical text. They're critical yeah. of what the Bible truly says. And so you can go through and you can read this. You'll see some of my notes down on the bottom. They do what they call the critical apparatus. Now, your Bible schools don't teach you how to read the critical apparatus of the, the Nestle Island text. If you learn how to read the critical apparatus, you can see how big of liars these people are That's right it used to be called the majority text the texas receptus because it's over five thousand. and so if you wanted to be a scholar who was trustworthy and one to be trusted you would go by the majority reading is this so i'm going to read with the majority but they don't do that they will always favor uh the the vaticana city atticus and they go against the Texas Receptus. This yeah. is against the Texas Receptus. Every new version of the Bible comes from this right here. And it's the Vatican trying to get people back to the Vatican corrupt Bible. And it's from the Gnostic. So they're going to the Gnostic text and they're trying to give you a Bible that's closer to the Gnostic Bible. All right. So with that stated, we look at this and we... 
we realize that no wonder people today use different versions and say, but it's not perfect and I can't believe it because they're casting doubt. Now, what does the Bible say about that? Should we cast doubt on, on things? I, I like this. Um, the Bible talks about faith. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please him, right? Yeah. God wants us to have faith. We're supposed to believe the word of God. <laughs> but modern Christianity has no faith when it comes to the Bible. Many of your modern Christians, they follow these biblical scholars who say, well, we don't know if this is what God said or not. And so they cast doubt on the word of God. What does the Bible say? And he that doubteth is damned. <laughs> mm. Doubt is the opposite of faith. We're not supposed to be out there causing doubt. That's We're right. We're supposed to be out there um, telling the truth and saying, hey, God's word is preserved somewhere. And if we find it, we know we have the inerrant, infallible, perfect word of God preserved for right. us. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You That's can't right. say, well, I think my translation's better. When the very people that put out the text that yours came from said, no, it's not perfect. <laughs> but when you believe the King James, you know where it came from. You know that it's perfect. So the King James Bible comes from the true text. All other versions come from the corrupt critical text, which is really from the ancient Gnostic text in which they went in to erase a lot of the doctrine that we believe because they didn't believe it. So what do you want? Do you want the book from God or do yep. you want a book that men say is from God, but they went through and they changed things so that you will believe differently. So we've got this to get into. Now, add to that, Fabrielle, let's talk about that. We'll get into eventually the different changes in these versions. But do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I, I've spoken with many, many people concerning um, concerning this case on the Nestle Allen Greek text. And, and people have graduated from college and they don't want to listen to me when I'm trying to explain to them the history behind of it. You know, these are people that who, I'm t who I was talking to. These are people who have been educated beyond their own beyond their own intelligence. And so, modern education does not give you an education of truth. Yeah. It educates you to believe the lie, and not yeah. just in bi Bible. Look at anything else. If you go to college, do they teach you the Bible and the truth and tell you to love God? No. Most of what Bible uh, of well, knows about what all colleges are is to talk you out of your faith in the God. Right. And to teach you an indoctrinated thing that they want you to believe, like evolution or something like that. So mm -hmm. we can't believe in Bible scholars who go with a wrong text. That's right. Yep. So keep that's, going. Yeah, that's precisely it. And, and again, you know, uh, if, if you if anyone would just bother to do some honest research on the background of where these where, the, where these texts come from, first of all, they come from Egypt, Alexander Egypt. In the Bible, if you look in your Bible, Egypt is often spoke as uh, negatively. It's it's a type of the world. It's a type of sin. Why would you want to run to Egypt? Why can you just go to Antioch, where the script, where the Christians were first called Christians in Antioch? The Bible says, I think that's in Acts chapter eleven. Let me share that with you. So why are you going to run to a place that is filled with devils, to a place that historically speaking has always been negative? Why? Why are you going to do that? Why are you going to listen to, why are you going to get text from someone for a person like Origen who went ahead and chopped pieces of himself off <laughs> after reading certain portions of the Bible, you know? So it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and so most people don't know who Origen was. Origen was a guy in Alexandria who is most likely the author of the LXX or the Septuagint and who has changed many of the verses in the Bible. He had what's called the Hexapla, which was six different translations. Yeah. And so he changed the Bible. And he did not know how to rightly divide, as do most scholars. Most scholars, one of the most famous scholars is from, is it Chapel Hill in North Carolina University? His name is Bart Erdman, Ehrman, E-H-R. Well, I think of his name and I think Jesus said, you do their, their greatly err, not knowing the scriptures. <laughs> and his name is Ehrman. I think that's so funny. But the Bible tells us um, about, well, so uh, Origen, he was someone who perverted the Bible. And he cut off his own manhood mm. because he, he didn't understand how to rightly divide. He read the verse of my right hand offended, he cut it off. He said, well, I think about girls alike a lot. So he cut off his penis. Do, do we put our faith and trust in people like this that are perverts, that don't know how to rightly divide and who mutilate themselves? Um, the NIV Bible has 65 or 64,000 words less than the King James Bible. Two people that worked on that translation uh, came out and said openly that they were homosexuals. 
Mm. Uh, one of them was a woman, and she changed the word sodomite in the Bible to temple male prostitute in the NIV. What is a temple male prostitute? <laughs> and why would you take out that descriptive term, sodomite? Um, yeah. These people, by their own personal bias, come to the Bible and change it because they hate it. They hate what God says. And so they're doing what they do. So when you're using a new version of the Bible, do you know who put it out? Do you know why it says what it says? Do you know what kind of person that was? Number one, were they saved? Yeah. I don't think Will Scott and Hort were saved. Number two, did they go to the right text? Let me give you an example. Okay. What I'm trying to show you is how the, it's completely evil these new versions of the Bible and the men behind them. And I want you to see that because Satan hates God and he hates God's word. So he will do anything he can to cause doubt on it. And he will use as many people as he can to change the Bible. This is my, what I call a shock factor. Let me show you a shock factor to shock you about a new version of the Bible. This is called the Children's Living Bible. Oh, the oh. Children's Living Bible, a paraphrase edition. Oh, it's for children. Oh, who put this out? I think it was Kenneth Taylor or someone like that. And they did this translation for children. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, 1972, first printing, the, the Living Bible by Tyndale House Publishers. What a beautiful thing. They they love children, don't they? Oh, let's yeah. Look at, let's look at a, how they translate. And you tell me, <laughs> this is not King James saying this. Yeah. This is a man who is a pervert. That's right. Making his own translation of the Bible and teaching your kids this right here. Can you read that right there? Because uh, I don't have to increase the screen. Yeah. All right. Let me get yeah, It's too small. Yeah. Let me go to increase the screen. Yeah, you gotta increase the screen. All right. I'm not going to read it. Oh, that's not the right one. No, I'm not going to read it. All right. I'm going to, let me see. I guess I'll go just to me here. All right. Yeah. There you go. I'm not going to read this. I'm going to let you read it. Saul boiled with rage. You. <laughs> no. Do you, do you wow. think that's appropriate for a child? But they're good. To learn how to cuss? Breaker. Breaker, they're good godly people, right? No, 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 no new translation is, is bad. They're all good, especially those for children. It'll teach them how to say SOB. Oh, would you look at that? Right. Oh. So I cannot and will not accept new versions of the Bible knowing that many of the people that put it out aren't saved that they come from the wrong text and that they're based on the Gnostic text and that their goal is to get people to well, on that cuss or get back to Rome. So I don't want to be uh, um, someone that uses another version of the, of the Bible. Now, quickly, I've had people tell me, well, Brother Breaker, I just don't understand the King James. And I say, come on, man. I've been reading it since I was a kid. I completely understand it. I have no problems with it. Let me see if I can share this real quick. Um, I'm sharing my screen here because I want to share this. Does that show up? I can't tell. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. It says, mind your T's and, and Y's. Now, some people say, well, I don't understand the King James Bible, the these and thou's. I don't understand the these and thou's. Mm. You can't understand the, the Bible without the these and thou's. That's because right. Because the these and thou's are there because that's how the Greek text reads. Other languages have singular pronouns and plural pronouns. And in English, we didn't have this kind of thing. So we had to have thee and thou. For example, when you say um, thee and thou, um, ye and you, okay? Ye is plural. So when I say ye, I'm saying not just you, I'm saying many people. So in John chapter 3 and verse 7, Jesus says, verily I say unto thee, okay, ye must be born again. So when I read in the King James Bible, John 3, 7, verily I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Jesus is saying, you guys, all of you yeah. present. And he's even saying it to us. All of us today have to be born again. But when you take that out, that plural ye, like the NIV does, look what it says. And you should not be surprised at my saying, you, you must be born again. You is singular. So in an NIV, you read NIV and it says you must be born again. Jesus is telling Nicodemus, in all the history of the world, the only person that ever needs to be born again is you, Nicodemus, not anybody else. <laughs> Does that sound right to you? <laughs> no. Who needs to be born again? Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. So 
you you have to have the these and the DAOs. You have to understand and learn these things because unless you learn these things, you're not gonna you're not gonna understand the Bible. Yeah. So let's see, where are we here? I got to get back up here. And so this is so important that it's and uh, we're still here. Okay. So this is so important. So nothing wrong with the King James Bible. It has sold more copies than any book in the world, and it's been more revival than any book in the history of the world. When did the revival, okay, so England sent missionaries and America sent missionaries, all using the King James Bible. Around the world, they went with the gospel. And so the Victorian time was the best time to be alive. There were so many Christians. When did things start to fall apart? When all these new versions came out. Yeah. And now you go to a church and they all say something different. So with all that stated, we're going to go into some verses and begin showing you how new versions of the Bible not only change doctrine, but they they make Jesus a liar and they claim Jesus is not God mm -hmm. and they make Jesus in danger of going to hell. Yeah. And they yeah. take away the fact that you must be born again. Ye must be born again. Every person needs to be born again. And Amen. also King James Bibles, it's not copyrighted. So anybody can print the King James Bible. Yep. Anytime they want. Now they say there's a copyright on it. Well, the only copyright was the crown saying you have a right to, as long as you don't change it, uh, quote it without having to pay for it. Do you know new versions of the Bible you have to pay for when you quote from them? Yep. That's right. If you, to, if you wanted to write a gospel tract and you wanted to use the NASB or the NIV or some other version, you'd have to pay those people money in order. And guess where that money goes? Probably back to the Pope. That's right. So I don't want to be a part of uh, those people that are using other versions of the Bible. So we've got a lot to get into here, and uh, I want to show you some things. Here's my Greek book from when I was in Bible school. <laughs> um, and I've, I've studied Hebrew and Greek, and I've studied the Bible issue, and I cannot in good conscience use anything other than the King James Bible. Amen. People say, like here's somebody now saying, but the King James Bible is too hard. <laughs> it is not too hard. Uh, Gail Ripplinger wrote a wonderful book, New Age Bible Versions, and she talks about how these new versions, there's a plan for them. It's to bring people back to Rome, but it's also to help bring in the new age. And she does a scientific test called the Fleshman Kincaid test. Mm. And she does that and finds out that the King James Bible on average is on a sixth grade reading level. Yep. And new versions are on a eighth to a twelfth grade reading level. So new versions scientifically are harder to read than the King James Bible. That's right. Now, I grew up reading the King James Bible ever since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. I never had any problems with it. So you want to learn English? Read the King James Bible. Amen. So we get started. I'm sure some of my verses will be the same as yours, but why don't you go ahead and show us and start with like the worst ones first. Show us some places in, in these new versions of the Bible that All are right. wrong. Oh, well, no problem. You know, as you said, these, these new versions, they, they make everything more complicated than it has to be. And we're going to show you some situations here in the Bible, well, in the new versions also, that make everything just 10 times more complicated than it has to be. All right, I'm, I'm sharing my screen here. Okay. All right, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, I mean, not hear me, see me. All right, so we're going to see here, uh, this is a verse you recently quoted. Uh, For we're not as many which corrupt the word of God. But a sincerity, but as of God and in, in the sight of God, we speak, we speak we in Christ. As you mentioned earlier, there's tons of people out there who have corrupted the word of God. There's people out there who who want to change the word of God, try to make it quote unquote easier and everything like that. And again, it's all one big, one, one big, you know, it's one big joke, if you will. So we're gonna see here in our on our and I'm using blue letter Bible, by the way. We're gonna see here in the new versions to see how they mess this up completely. So the KJV says, all right, corrupt. We're, there's, we're not as many which corrupt the word of God. NLT. You see, we're not like many hucksters. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Berker, do you know what a huckster is? No. What's a huckster? I have no clue. Is it Huckleberry <laughs> Finn or something? I mean, hard. That's, that's what we call a street word. That doesn't even sound like God or the Bible. Does God talk like that? Now, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not be a huckster. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't even sound exactly. biblical or godly, but go ahead. So in, in the RSV, we see, for we're not like so many peddlers of God's word. So I researched that word peddlers. That basically means to make money off of it, right? 
to peddle the, uh, the word of God, to make money off of it. And I'm like, there's a difference between corrupting and peddling the word of God. You see, these new translations, oh yeah, they peddle the word of God. As we previously previously stated, uh, they're, they're copyrighted. If you want to quote it, you got to pay, buddy. They're yeah. peddling the word of God. You see, so they're even admitting to their crime right here. <laughs> That's something. They're yeah, admitting it's, to their It's all crime. about money for them. That's what it is. That's yeah. what they want. Yep. Not only are they peddling the word of God, but in the King James Bible, they're what? Corrupting it also. Ain't that something? NIV. Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. All right. Well, same thing. Peddle. ESV. Peddle. CSB. Uh, the word of God for profit like so many. All right. So in here, they make it. They're, they're trying to be more honest here. Hey, we do not market the word of God for profit. You see? That's what they're doing, these new translations. They're doing it for a profit. And yet that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. That's yeah, why so they do it, to make money on it. And they claim it's easier to read. And it's from the better manuscripts. And that's the lie. That's the lie. Because the manuscripts wow. are Vaticanus and City Atticus that are full of errors and mistakes. Yep, yeah. Go ahead. And in another verse we're going to see here, this is one of my funniest ones, you know, because people complain about the King James Bible that the italics, they were just mad made and they were added in there, you know, just, you know, just because the King James translators were evil and stuff like that. So, and here we see in 2 Samuel 21, 19, uh, the Bible says there was again a battle in God with the Philistines where Elhanan, the son of Jeroboam, a Bethlehemite, slew, notice, the brother of Goliath the Gittite. The staff whose spear was like a weaver's beam. So notice, uh, there's no, there's nothing wrong here because he, Elhanan slew the brother of Goliath. Now pay close attention right here. You notice this? These are yeah. italics, right? Now, since you're a uh, normal scholar, typical scholar, oh, that's in italics? Well, that wasn't in the Greek text, so let's remove it, right? On that that's case, it. Hebrew, in the Hebrew text, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Hebrew text. So notice what ends up happening. Notice the, the big bamboozle you get yourself into. During another battle at Gob, Elhanan, the son of Jerah from Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath. Okay, here he has it right. Uh, think here. Yeah, here he has it right. He has the brother of right here. So in, in the NLT, he has it right. But in the NLT, still has problems. We're going to see why also in a bit. So here we go. ASV, Elhanan, the son of Jerah, Gob, the Bethlehemite, slew Goliath the Gittite. What? Hmm. I thought all translations you know said the same thing. That's an outright lie. <laughs> I thought we you know David killed Goliath. So why is this lying? If you take words lie. out, it's a lie. And that is a lie in those versions because it has someone else killing Goliath. And oh, but see, there's there's no doctrine affected in new versions of the Bible. How many times oh, have you heard God. someone say that? They must God. not read the Bible. Go ahead. Bible perverters is what they are, because again, notice. RSV, the Bethlehemite slew Goliath the Gittite. You see the problem when you get rid of italics in the King James Bible? You see, italics are there to make the sen to make the sentence make sense. Because if you remove the italics, you encounter a big problem. All right? And this is the big problem right here. You have a plain contradiction where Elhanan ends up killing Goliath the Gittite. But I thought, I thought all translations said the same thing. Yeah. Well, that's not I, the that's what they told me, right? That's what they said. Hey, oh, all translations say the same thing. Yeah, right. Blow it out your nose. <laughs> Notice this. And here the NIV gets it right. All right. ESV struck down Goliath. You see, so these these are not saying the same thing, if no. you know. They're and not I've heard so much thing. lately, so many saying the ESV is the best translation. Right there, it's a lie from the pits of hell. Because yeah, it said yeah. somebody else killed Goliath rather than David. Uh, yeah. And you think that's, that's right. a better translation, do you? No. Better trans oh, yeah, it's a better translation. Oh, yeah, the devil's translation. Yeah, that's what it is. So John 7, 8 is the next one. Yeah, what is it? John 7, 8, where Jesus Christ said, of course, the whole, the whole story here is that he's telling them, I'm not going up yet unto this feast for my time is not yet full come. And when he said these words, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up un unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. So notice, he went to this feast, but in secret. One of the why? Because he said, I go not up yet unto this feast. Right. Right. right? So, okay, yeah, Jesus didn't lie because he said yet. But I just have a hunch, Brother Britt. I, I just have a feeling 
that the devil is going to try to make the Lord Jesus a liar in the new right. version. Right. We're going to see right here. We're going to see, we're going to compare Bibles right here. All right. NLT. You go on. I'm not going to this festival because my time is not yet full come. Ah? Huh? What did they just remove? They put a footnote here. Some manuscripts read not yet going. Oh, okay. So notice. Notice what they're saying. They're saying, listen, some manuscripts say this, but this is the word of God. Right? right. I'm not going to this festival. Well, congratulations. You just made Jesus Christ a liar. Because later he went to the festival. So Jesus yeah. Christ, who is God manifest in the, life, in the flesh that cannot lie, in yet version of the Bible, he's a liar. Yeah. Notice, ASV, go ye up unto the feast. I do not go up unto this feast because my time is not yet uh, fulfilled. So notice, remove. So I go not up unto this feast. See, he lied. Yep. RSV, go to the festival yourselves. I am not going to this festival, for my time has not yet fully come. Made him a liar here. Uh, NIV. Yeah, you got the NIV one. Yeah. Festival, Hope you're still there. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Okay, go ahead. It's froze on us for a second. Yeah. It says, I'm not going to this festival. Same thing with the uh, e ESV. I am not going up to this feast. So all of these new perversions make Jesus Christ a liar. Right. Even, and, and even, one word, just one word, just and one word. A liar. Same thing with the NASB. I had a had a commentator some time ago tell me the NASB is perfect. Well, let's see. Go up to the feast yourselves. I am not going up to this feast because my time is not yet fully arrived. Wow. <laughs> you see this nonsense? Yep. Let's show this us is another one. Nonsense. Nonsense. Yep. Uh, let's go here to uh, First John. Now, this is, of course, all the new Bibles we're moving. This is one of the best proof texts of the Trinity, all right? The Trinity is that there's one God and three persons, the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, or the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. But remember, I can't tell you how many times I've met a pastor. I say, are you King James only? He goes, no, they're all the same. He said, no new version affects doctrine. I've heard that so many times, oh. and I can't help but just look him in the eye and say, don't lie to me. Amen. Because look at this doctrine. This is the doctrine of the Trinity or the Godhead. And That's it is right. accepted. Look what they do. Look what they do. Oh, Go ahead. So the Bible says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost, and these three are one. All right. So if you do a proper cross-reference, the Word is who? Jesus Christ. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Right? So the Word was made flesh. That's Jesus. All right? So the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. But let's see how these perverters... These Bible perverters pervert the word of God. Let's see. Let's take a look. So NLT. So we have these three witnesses. And what, what three witnesses? What three witnesses? <laughs> <laughs> they removed it. It's gone. They removed it. ASV. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Uh, that's not what it said. <laughs> That's not what it said. You see, all translations say the same thing. Y'all yeah, right. RSV. And the spirit is the witness because the spirit is truth. Huh? That's not okay. Uh, let's NIV then. For there are three that testify. Nothing. Eh. ESV. For there are three that testify. Eh. CSV, for there are three that testify, NASB, three that testify, NASB, three that testify. You see this garbage? How can you sit down and tell me that all translations say the same thing? Meanwhile, they don't, and they take out doctrines from the Bible. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. You remember that, Brother Breaker? You know what they're doing now? This is what they're doing. They're worth trying to worship God in spirit, but not in truth. The Bible says thy word is truth, right? And these people, they run to these perversions, try to worship God. Oh, God will lead me and guide me through these perversions. Uh, no, he won't. He'll get you yep. out of them. He'll get you out he of them. I said it perfectly. God said to worship him in spirit and in truth. Many churches you go to, they're all, oh, we love God. We're in the spirit. And you say, what Bible you got? Oh, I have the ASV. Well, where's the truth? You're worshiping God in spirit only, but not in truth. 
If That's you want right. to worship God the way the Bible says in spirit and truth, you need the King James. Amen. Otherwise, you have a version that is changing and taking words out and affecting doctrine. Won't even tell you who the three witnesses are. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yep, that's absolutely right. And and man, it, it, the perversion does not stop there. Now, if you study through the book of Acts, right, you know, dispensationally, we know that Acts is a transitional book, correct? Right. And uh, and not many Baptists, you know, know this, but there's there's a difference in soteriology through through the through the transition of the book of Acts. Some people receive the Holy Ghost by repenting and getting baptized. Some of them don't receive the Holy Ghost by getting baptized, but just believing, you know, so there's a transition. Now in here, this is a perfect proof text for the church age because Philip here, he's dealing with a what? Ethiopian eunuch, a Gentile, not a Jew. So obviously this is going to, this is going to be totally by faith alone. All right. If you if you understand a transitional book of the Gentiles, and we see this, we see this. Notice notice what he says, uh, Philip, uh, verse uh, chapter eight, verse thirty six. And as they went their way, they came unto a certain water, and a eunuch said, "See, here is water. What doth hindered me to be baptized?" Verse thirty seven. And Philip said, "If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest." And he answered and said, "I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God." You see. This right here, and I just want to off topic, this right here is confession unto salvation. He's declaring something that he already did. Amen. <laughs> He's declaring something that he already did. And there's so many people get messed up saying, oh, they got to confess to get saved. No, he's just stating what he just did. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is son of God. This is a good picture right here. But anyways, that's that's off topic. But either way, um, if you notice in Acts chapter eight, verse thirty seven. If you look at your Bibles, if you notice your new Bibles, notice what happens to this verse. NLT, footnote. Some, you see, they make a footnote out of this as a basically saying, oh, this is just our opinion, you know. ASV, with a footnote here. RSV. Other ancient authorities at all or most of 37, and Philip said. So notice, footnote, footnote. Hmm. Footnote and ASB complete takes it out and footnote. You see this? What's the ESV do? Or show the ESV? ESV footnote. Yeah, but where's the verse? Yeah, it's gone. It's right. It's right here. They, they. I think they're quoting. Uh, ESV is the best translation. Oh, really? Then why don't you have the verse in there? Yeah, they so took it out. What does it, what does it do when you take that verse out? Well, if you read it in context without that verse, it makes you think water baptism saved the guy. Yeah. Because if you take now, this who out, would want, who yeah. would want you to believe that except someone who is a heretic who believes that water baptism saves you? So yeah. they just took a whole verse out, and that does affect doctrine. Yeah, that's right. And like, let's read it without the verse. Let's see if it says the same thing. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Verse 38, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. Also, that's what hindered him to be baptized. The chariot was still moving. Okay, stand still, and they both into the wind and the water, and both Philip and Eunuch, and he baptized him. You see the garbage here? You know who promotes this nonsense? The Catholic Church. Because they believe you can be baptized. Like That's why they believe in infant baptism. Because you don't have to believe to get saved. You just have to be baptized. You see so the garbage? You read it without verse 37, and it yeah. sounds like he went down and got baptized. So he just got saved because he got baptized. Yeah, but with verse baptized. 37, what do you find? No, it's by faith. By, by faith. faith. What's verse 37? And he was talking to a eunuch here, not a Jew. A eunuch, a, a Ethiopian eunuch, a Gentile. And, That's says, the point. and Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Yeah. And, so, and he answered and said, I believe. So he's believing. So it's the belief that saves him. Yeah. He's baptized after he's saved. But if That's you right. take that out of your Bible, it sounds like your water baptism saves you. So yes, that does affect doctrine, does it not? And yeah. the NIV is is very, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, they're not um, the truth. The majority of manuscripts have that verse. Yeah. The ones that take it out are the ones that come from Alexandria. Duh. Who would take mm -hmm. that out but someone who was an early Gnostic and Gnosticism eventually got into the Catholic Church and that led to them thinking that 
baptism of babies was what took away original sin and other things that aren't in the Bible. So it does affect doctrine and it does take you back to the Roman Catholic Church if you get away from the King James Bible. Yeah. Okay. That's what right. else you got for us? What's another That's one? Right. I got a plethora more, man. Here. Let's go here. Luke 2, 33. All right. So notice. Uh, let's see here. Luke 2.22, is that where you're going? Yeah, Luke uh, Luke 2.33. Oh, okay. We got to go back to Luke 2.22. Let's go to two, Luke 2.22 first. Yeah. Look at this, what it says, Luke 2.22. All right. I'll read it. And when the days of her purification, according to the laws of Moses, or law of Moses, were accomplished, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Her pur pur purification. Does it say her? Yes, sir. Okay. Under the Old Testament law, when a woman had a child, she had to go and give a, a sacrifice for her sin, for uncleanliness. Mm -hmm. So it's her purification so that she could be purified. Now look at it in the new versions of the Bible. Oh, boy. All right. Let's see. <laughs> then it was time for the purification offering. Huh? It was time for their purification. Their purification offering. Who would oh. there be? That would be Jesus and Mary. Yeah. Why would they put there instead of her? When you put there, you including Jesus, now Jesus needs a sacrifice for his sin? Mm. So Jesus Christ is a sinner who needed a sacrifice? Man. That's what you have to believe if you use another version of the Bible because that's what it says. They're liars. You know, you. My Savior is not a sinner. He never sinned. He never had to yeah. have a sacrifice because he was the sinless sacrifice. Yeah. Why would they change one word? Because yeah. they got that from the Alexandrian text rather than the yeah. true text. ASV, sure. there. R is a true Christian. That would insult you to put there. You would never do that. You say, no, no, her, because it's talking about her, not them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. ESV, there. CSB, there. NASB, there. NASB 90, there. They, wow. Oh, every one of those versions calls Jesus Christ a sinner Ooh. who needed a sacrifice for his sin. Ain't that something? Mm. That's something, ain't it? That's so a now, verse 33. Go there. What's on Luke oh, yeah, verse 33? So notice, this is... Do you see this? Not people? Only, they, not say, only, they say yeah. King James only people are too dogmatic. <laughs> Am I too dogmatic in defending the fact that Jesus is not a sinner? That's one of the main tenets of Christianity. Jesus yeah. never sinned. But yet your version, if you're not King James only, says, no, he had to ha have a sacrifice for his sin. Mm. Go ahead. It, it yeah. makes you angry that these people don't want to see it. Stupid. So we got to show it to them. It's stupid. Now, not only that they, as Brother Breaker pointed out, they made Jesus Christ a sinner. But notice, they notice what they do with this verse. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which are spoken of him. Him here being in the context of Christ, right? Spoken of Jesus. All right, so let's look at the new versions. Let's see how they messed this up. Notice, they already called Jesus Christ a sinner in the same chapter. Notice what they do. Notice what they do. So we're going to look here. Uh, ASV. And his father and his mother were marveling at the things which are spoken, spoken concerning him. What did they just do? They made, guess what? Jesus Christ, the son of Joseph. Therefore, he's a sinner because he's not the son of God. He's the son of a man. Notice what they just did, man. But, but Gabriel, no major doctrine of the faith is affected by new versions of the Bible. <laughs> That's what they say. No, so do far. Do know what they're talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah. No major doctrine. Notice, the child's father and mother. The child's father, even in the NIV, ESV, wow. and his father and his mother marveled at the. So notice, pal, looks like Jesus is not God. Apparently, if you truly believe your perversion that you have in your hands, you're going to have to say that Jesus, Jesus' father is not God, but Joseph. Yep. That's what you're going to have to say. You're going to have to admit that. CSB, his father and his mother, NASB 20, his father and his mother, NASB 95, his father and his mother. You're going to have to believe your perversion, buddy. 
So either you believe your perversion and you have to say Jesus is God, or if not, then you're a hypocrite and you're going to have to jump authorities. And at the very end of the day, you become the final authority, not God. What is it going to be? Either you're the final authority or that perversion that you have in your in your hands is. Which one is it? So here is the critical text apparatus. And mm -hmm. down there in the critical text apparatus, it says the majority text says Joseph. It does mm -hmm. not say the child's father. It says Joseph. If you claim to be translating the Bible from the original text and you're translating it literally from it, why aren't you using the Greek word Joseph? Why are you just putting the child's father? Why were you? You're not translating. You're putting your opinion that's right. Your, your opinion is most likely you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. That's what the Gnostics taught. So this is an example of Gnosticism. And where did they get that from? I'm looking right here at the critical apparatus. And it has the, the majority text has Joseph. Oh, look at that. The Aleph, which would be uh, Vaticanus, and other Alexandrian texts have the child. <laughs> That don't have Joseph. So they chose two corrupt Gnostic texts to change when all the other Greek texts said Joseph. Mm. They are not reliable people who put out new versions of the Bible. Yeah. These are corrupt devils who are being used by Satan to change doctrine. Anyone could go to that verse in the new version and say, no, see, Jesus wasn't God. He was just a man. And I've had Muslims do that to me. I've had Muslims try to take another version of the Bible and say, see, Jesus wasn't God. He was just a man. Look, And they showed me that verse. And I said, no, buddy, let's look at the King James Bible, the true Bible. It says Joseph. It doesn't say his father. Yeah. So this is this is incredible and evil at the same time. And it's the most wickedest of evil because they're changing the word of the eternal God. It's perverse. I'm a liar. It's perverse. Show us another one. Actually, I'll gladly show you more. Here, let's take a look here. Mark 3, verse 5. Mark 3, 5. I think I have this one. Oh, you have this one? Am I stealing yeah. it from you? <laughs> no, I'm, well, we're going to go to Matthew 5, 22 probably. But go yeah, ahead. yeah, that's, that's where we're going. Okay. All right, so notice. When he had looked round about them, uh, when he had looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their heart, he sent unto the man, stretched forth thine hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was re restored whole as the other. So notice, that's, notice what he did. Jesus Christ. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. And he was angry. Jesus yep. can get angry. It's called righteous he indignation. On them with anger, okay? So Jesus was angry, correct. Yep. Amen. That's right. Now that we know this, now that we know this, let's go to Matthew. Matthew 5, 22. Matthew 5, what new versions do. All right, so in the King James, it says, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry, angry with his brother, without a cause, shall be in danger of judgment. So notice what he's saying. Now, of course, the context here is talking about the kingdom of heaven. All right? So this is going to be, this is like the constitution of the kingdom, if you will. But here's what he's saying. Whosoever will be angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. So this is a sin, obviously. This is a sin. If you're angry with your brother without a cause, you're sinning. All right? Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible con condemns. Yep. Notice what the new perversions do. Notice what these perverters, good, godly scholars Good, godly scholars and godly. You know, I say godly because you know what? Even Lot was godly, according to the Bible, and he still did what he did. So godly don't mean nothing, does it? Hmm. I'm just tired. Oh, this good, godly scholar, a bum in the street who's high on cocaine can be just be as godly as a lot uh, more godly than a lost perverter. OK, because that's positional. There's a difference between being godly and living godly. Huge difference. But either way. Let's see. These new perversions. Notice what they say. NLT. But I say unto you, if you are, are even angry with someone, you're subject to judgment. Wait, what? So notice Jesus Christ is going to stand before the judgment because he was angry? <laughs> notice what he just did. Those, those perverters, demonically possessed perverters. Notice what they just did. They removed without a cause. So congratulations. Jesus is going to stand subject to judgment according to NLT. 
You can probably keep... go to hell. Huh. Is Jesus going to hell? I guess you could argue well, that. Right. Couldn't you? There's already some people who teach that, so you know what? Hey, might as well join him. Well, because he's not God. He's just a man born. Oh, of, yeah, apparently. Of yeah, so he got right. angry, so he's going yeah. to hell. All right? That's right. Yep. Well, you, see how you can twist that. If you have a King James, you couldn't teach that, could you? Exactly. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be in danger of judgment. Oh, they're removed without a cause. ASV says Jesus is a sinner. RSV, whosoever is angry with his brother shall be liable. Oh, RSV says he's a sinner. NAV and NIV, whosoever is angry with the brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Oh, made him a sinner again here. ESV, angry with his brother shall will be liable to judgment. Center ESV. What about the CSB? The CSB, of course, is the is the what you call it, the Southern Baptist Bible now, right? That's what the Southern Baptists are push are pushing. But notice what the Southern uh, the good godly Southern Baptist brethren have to say about this. Let's see. Let's see. Sorry, Everyone who's angry with his brother and sister will be subject to judgment. Oh, there you go. And ASB, same thing. Same thing. But I thought all versions said the same thing. Nope, they obviously don't. Let me share this with you real quick. Yeah, go um, ahead. Because you don't have to there. know. You don't have to know Hebrew and Greek. Okay, you don't have right. to know that. But it, if you do, it kind of helps sometimes. Because here we have. Hopefully, this mm -hmm. is sharing. Here is Matthew five twenty two, and right. the word without a cause in the King James Bible is um, one word in the Greek language, and it's eke. And so this word, eke, I don't know, that doesn't show up, does it? It shows up on my screen. But it says GU 1500. That's the word eke. And mm -hmm. eke means without a cause, or it says here, uh, idly or without reason or without a cause. So Jesus had a cause to be angry, correct? Of yep. course. Now, when you go to this corrupt Nestle Allen text and, and you look at it, you go to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 22, and here it is, and they leave out that word, eke. Yeah. You go down here to the bottom and you do the critical apparatus thing. Where am I here? And you you say, why did you leave out that word? Right? Eke. Because the majority text has that. Over 5,000 manuscripts say without a cause. These are the manuscripts that don't. Aleph and B. What is that? Vaticanus and Sidiaticus. Yeah. Why would they follow Vaticanus and Sidiaticus over and over and over? Those are the two most corrupt manuscripts that we have. Yeah. They differ between each other in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in over 3,000 places. They are corrupt. One of them was found in a garbage can, and the other came from the Vatican. And they preferentially choose to follow that Catholic critical text over the Texas Receptus, knowing that if we take that word out, it makes Jesus a sinner because yeah. he's angry. But he's not a sinner if he's angry with a cause. He's only a sinner if he's angry without a cause. What, who could do such a thing and Perverter. be taken seriously as a Bible scholar and as a Christian? Yeah. Someone that knows no doctrine whatsoever and someone that who hates the Texas Receptus from which our King James Bible. From. I have no faith in these so-called Bible scholars. They're devils. Who are getting you back yeah. to the Gnostic text that attacks the deity of Christ? That's what they are. Mind if I keep showing real quick? I got more. Yes, let me pull it up here. All right, can you see it? Oh, yeah, you can. Okay. What's the All next right. one? All right, and the next one is Proverbs. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs here 18, 24. So, folks, do you see? We're not just talking out our butts. This is yeah. real. There is a conspiracy against the word of God by Satan and by a certain church who has corrupted it way back when and yep. had a corrupted version up to today in Latin. And guess what? They want you to get back to their corrupted text because they want to make Gnostics out of you. They don't want you to believe that Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. All right. What does it say? So notice in the King James Bible, Proverbs 18, 24, a man that had friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. All right, so notice the Bible says a man to have friends must show himself friendly. Now, of course, uh, how many friends do you have, Brother Breaker? Uh, several, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, all right. Same here. I got a lot of friends. My whole church, every, everyone is a friend of my church. I got a lot, a lot of church member friends and also a lot of friends outside of church. You know, I, I have a lot of friends. All right, maybe the same, same for everyone here. So, so we're going to see what these new versions, these 
perversions have to say about this little topic right here. Okay, go ahead. Let's look. Bibles. Let's look at the ASV. He that maketh many friends doeth it to his own destruction. <laughs> Wait, but I thought oh, all no. the same thing. I gotta stop making friends then, man. I don't want to make friends. I got too many pal. I gotta stop making friends. Sorry. If I unfriend some people, let sorry, pal. Let me go. I, I gotta start unfriending people. Unfriend, yeah, unfriend, 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 unfriend. I gotta make some phone calls and stuff. I gotta start unfriending people. All right, RSV. There are Sorry, friends. I've changed to the Bible. You can't be my friend anymore. There you go. You can't be. Your I'm friend. no longer King James, and you can't be my friend anymore because I don't want to be destroyed. Bye. No. Bye. There uh -huh. you go. It's aggravating how people don't see this. <laughs> there are friends who pretend to be friends. Okay. Is that saying the same thing <laughs> as the ASV? <laughs> Is that saying the same thing as the ASV? I thought all translations said the same thing. Right, that's what they claim. ESV, a man of many companions may come to ruin. ESV, <laughs> well, look at that. I better stop, you know, making friends and making companions because I can come to ruin real quickly according to these new perversions. Oh, notice NASB, <laughs> a person of too many friends comes to ruin. Well. <sighs> I'm gonna have to start in front of people, brother Breaker. I'm sorry, Breaker. You can't be my friend anymore. I'm 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 gonna have to leave the live stream. Bye. Oh, no, I'm I'm just kidding. Well, it's okay because I was angry with you. So because I was angry with you, I'm going to hell. So yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. what would my father think? Yeah. Uh, oh man, it's it's so messed up. Man. You make fun and laugh, but it's not a laughing matter. It's sad. Yeah. If someone it's is changing the Bible and lying to you, telling you, but ours is a more accurate translation. No, it's not. Yours is causing confusion. No yep. wonder churches are confused and no one's preaching the gospel. Let's get another one because we got a lot more to get into. What's the Let's next? One? I'm, I'm enjoying myself here. Notice. Uh, the Bible. I love God's word. Okay, here's yeah. the good one. I want to show you this one. Go ahead. All right. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received unto glory. So notice what the King James Bible says. God was manifest in the flesh. There's people out there who are saying that Jesus was not God, right? There's people out there saying that God did not manifest in the flesh, that Jesus is not God. He is just the son, not God. Complete different. There's another heresy that's like that. And that's what they're saying. But the Bible says God God was manifest in the flesh. So guess what? Gee, by that conclusion, Jesus is God. Because who was he talking to? Who? What What portion of manifest in the flesh is it referring to? It's obviously referring to Jesus. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? So, okay, yeah. let's look at the new perversions, right? Right. So let's God manifests in the God flesh. Perversions. That's the deity of Christ. God manifests in the flesh. All right. These godly perversions up in here. All right. NLT. Let me go here. NLT. Without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in a human body. What? What? What did they just do? They removed wow. God. So was he? A, in, yeah, but is he in a body like us with sin? So he's in a he's in a sinful nature like us. Is that what they're saying? No, that can't be right. ASV, he who was manifest in the flesh. <laughs> wow. These perverters removed God out of, there, out of there and put heat to make it vague. You see, when you try to prove that Jesus is God, this is one of the best verses because God was manifest in the flesh. But notice what these perversions do. They remove the proof text. He was, uh, was manifest in the flesh. RSV, uh, he was manifest in the flesh. NIV. He appeared in the flesh. ESV. He was manifest in the flesh. CSB. He was manifest in the flesh. And the good godly NASB, of course. There's some people who are saying, the the best he, uh, he who was revealed in the flesh. You see how these perverters, Bible perverters is what they are, perverting the word of God. 
and still have the uh, the courage to say, yeah. well, all translations say the same thing, right? So when you look into this, you find out that God in the Greek language is theos. And yeah. in my use, uh, in large letters, it's, it's written like this, okay? Now, in some of the texts, it was written like this. They shortened it. So the short version of God was theos, shortened like this. Now, the text that they come to, to change that and to take God out, the word hos means he or he who. Yeah. And there's one text, and I forget if it's the Vaticanus or the Sinaiticus, but in that text, when you look at it, you see the shortened version of God, and you see that where there was a line through it, it would been it had been erased. So it looks a little like this. Mm. Like you can barely tell that there was a line through it, but someone erased it. These blockhead Bible scholars chose yeah. this rather than this. Even though you could clearly tell it says God, they said, no, I think it says he. Now, what does that do? When it says God was manifest in the flesh, that means Jesus Christ is God. That's the deity of yeah. Christ. If you change that to simply he was manifest in the flesh, who is he? The pronoun has no antecedent. We don't know who he is, but whoever he is, he was manifest in the flesh. Well, every one of us is manifest in the flesh when we're born. This yeah. is one of the greatest attacks on the deity of Christ of any verse in the Bible. Yeah. And through fraud, any first year Greek student would looking at the text would go, no, that had a line through it. That's theos, shortened version of God. So when you look at these things, you begin to see a pattern forming. That these people who claim to be Bible scholars yeah, have a yeah. preference or a bias against the fact that Jesus Christ is God. And they want to go to that one text or those two or three texts, Alexandrian text, that are against the deity of Christ. Could it be they're the Gnostics? Could it be the same spirit of devils that led the Gnostics or right. leading them? Because that's what I believe, is that that's a Gnostic Bible that does that. It makes me angry. It makes my blood boil. Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh. Why would you want a perverted Bible that changes that and waters it down? Right. Again, there's people out there who say, oh, no, it's it fine. Sense. You're just causing too much division, Breaker. You're just causing too much division, Brother Fabro. It, they all like this, this. Let's love. Let's love one another, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Here, let me show you another one real quick. This, this say, one. It's, no big deal. it's no big deal. It's no oh. big deal. The Bible is God's love letter to us. The Bible yeah. is God's love letter to us. I don't want people messing with, with God's le love letter to me. When my wife and I, before we got married, we'd write letters. I would have really beat somebody up if they took my letter and changed the words and then gave it to her. Yeah. Yeah. And vice versa. If she sent it to me and somebody goes, well, I read, your, I read what she wrote to you, Brother Breaker, but I changed it for you so you'll understand it better. You did what? No, I want to know her words, not what you think she should have said. And that's yeah. what people are getting with new versions of the Bible, what some man thinks that it should have said, but not mm. what it actually says. Yeah. So what's another one? Here, Mark chapter one. This Oh, boy, this one's... If this does not convince you that the perversions are actually perversions, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. You're just, you're, you're just being an, exactly an outward liar. All right, so this, this notice, is making the Bible a lie. Yeah, go ahead. Notice what the Bible says, Mark one two, as it is written in the prophets, "Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee." The voice of one crying in the wilderness, "Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight." Notice, he said, "Prophets." Yep. Why? Because this uh, this verse in verse two. Is quoting uh, Malachi. Two prophets. Yeah, so there's two prophets. And here so there's two prophets, verse Malachi. 2 and verse 3. Yeah. One is a quote of Malachi, chapter 3 and verse 1, and the other yeah. is a quote of Isaiah, chapter 40 and verse 3. Yeah. So the King James Bible is right when it says, as it is written in the prophets, because the prophet. Mark is about to cite what two different prophets said. Yeah. All right. So now let's look at what new versions do. All right. So let's see now. Let's see. Let's see. They all say the same thing, right? <laughs> NLT. 
Just as the prophet Isaiah had written, look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you and he will prepare your way. What? So that's that's, that's Malachi quoting. It's two people saying two different things. So you have to say prophets. But this says, as it says in Isaiah, the prophet, well, Isaiah said one of those, but Isaiah didn't say the other one. That's mm -hmm. why it's a lie. Isaiah didn't say both things. Malachi said one thing and then Isaiah said the other. So yeah. why would you use a version of the Bible that makes God lie? No, but Breaker, they all say the same thing, right? And, and no doctrine of the faith is affected except for the oh, fact yeah. that you just made God a liar. <laughs> all, oh, the same thing. all versions are respectable. Let's see here. As Even as it is written in the prophet, behold, I'll send my messenger before that face. This is Malachi, not Isaiah. RSV, Malachi, not Isaiah, but they say Isaiah here. NIV, Isaiah, ESV, Isaiah, CSB, Isaiah, NASB 20. Oh, the good godly NASB. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, wait. Isaiah. Liars. That's what they are. Liars. Amen. Amen. How can you say, how can you look at me straight in the face and use a perversion and tell me you are worshiping God when God clearly said in his word, they that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. Is this truth? Is this truth? Liars. Nope. It's changed the Bible to now we can't. If I had a new version of the Bible and I read that, the first thing I would do is would be doubt it. Well, that's yeah. not what Isaiah said. That's what Malachi said. So I'd say, man, the Bible must have errors in it. And I would yeah, become a non-Christian, I guess. Or Either a skeptic God or his word or he didn't. Exactly. Either now, why didn't. would they change it to Isaiah the prophet? Because the Alexandrian text changed it. Hmm. Do you see the bias? Do you see they're changing to follow the text that was people that didn't believe the Bible, the Gnostics, rather than following the text of those that preserved it, that did believe it? Messed hmm. up. That real, real messed up. Real Let's quick, while, while you're looking for a new one, uh, another one, uh -huh. someone in the in the chat says, "What Scott and Hort were transvestites? Evidence, please." This is how people talk when you start telling the truth. Well, really? I mean, show me that. Okay, here's hazardous materials book by Gail Ripplinger. And here is the club that Westcott and Hort <laughs> belonged to. That was the cross-dressing club in which they dress like women. And we go and have parties where one dress like one. So I, I'm not just talking out my rear end people making stuff up. We have studied this. Who wants a Bible based on the text of the trannies? I mean, the, 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 the transvestites. Yeah. That, the truth is stranger than fiction. And when you start getting into the truth, you cannot use a new version of the Bible because you have to doubt whether that is really what God said. But when you have the King James, you don't have to doubt it because you know, no, that's got to be the preserved one because he said he'd preserve it. And it must be preserved somewhere. Go ahead. Yeah. West God and Hort. What evil men? What evil men? All right. Can you see here? What's the next one? Here. Oops. So, yeah, here. I'm going to go real quick. Uh, let's see. Mark. Mark 10, 24. Okay, I don't have this one. All right, now pay close attention. This is what Jesus Christ said, What's Mark that? ten twenty four. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered it again and said unto them, Children, how hard it is, is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Now, notice the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? It's spiritual, right? So, yes, it is true, because those who trust in riches is going to be hard for them to enter the kingdom of God. That's you see that with celebrity stars and everything. Right. So okay. it's going to be hard for them because they're trusting in their riches rather than Christ. Now, notice what these, again, perversions do to this verse. This is also what the Catholic Church teaches. Does your Bible align with the Catholic Church? Let's see. NLT. This amazed them, but Jesus said again, Dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. No, it's not. <laughs> it's hard if you trust in riches, but it's not hard to enter the kingdom of God. 
that's saying it's hard to get saved. That's literally what it's saying. Jesus says, hey, by the way, it's hard to get saved. What a horrible thing to say. My Jesus didn't say that. <laughs> Dummies is what it is. Look, the ASV. The disciples. Well, they're, ignorant. they're ignorant. That yeah. may be on purpose or that may not be on purpose. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Hopefully they'll yeah. wake up. But how can you defend this? The more we get into this, how do you defend another translation? Yeah. And we just touched the surface, folks. Let's yeah. keep going. Yeah. RSV. Surface. But Jesus said unto them, children, how hard it is to enter into the kingdom of God. So it's hard, apparently, to get saved. It's hard. Children, how hard it is to enter into the kingdom of God. NIV. ESV. Children, how difficult it is to enter into the kingdom of God. CSB. Children, how hard it is to, en uh, to enter, uh, and enter the kingdom of God. CSB. What about the NASB, the good godly NASB now? Oh. Jesus responded again and said to them, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. No, it's not. It's not hard. It's only hard if you trust in your riches. But right. it's not hard, period. Salvation yeah. is by grace through yeah. faith, not of works, yeah. lest any man should boast. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says. It's just by faith in the blood of Christ for your salvation. To enter in the kingdom of God. But these perverters, they say, well, let's remove trust and riches here so we can make it hard. Why? Because in the Catholic Church, you got to take the sacraments, you got to go to confession, you got to take the Eucharist, and, and you got to hope for the best because it's hard. You see this garbage? Yeah, I see it. So garbage. Keep going. We got a lot to get into. So let's keep going. What's let's the next one? Going. Amen. Let's keep going. So, and here, let's go to Luke. We want all people to be King James Bible believers because that's the true word of God that brought revival. These new versions don't bring revival. Now, I don't know about you, but if you go to a, like a Bible believing church or a Baptist church, you've all obviously sung about Calvary, right? Mm -hmm. We've all sung about Calvary. It's in the it's in the hymn books and everything, right? Everyone knows about this. There's even songs about Calvary. Can we agree with that? Amen. All right. Because why? The Lord Jesus Christ died here at Calvary. Calvary is a center point of, of what happened to the Jesus Christ and, and also in the Gospels. Calvary. We sing about it in churches. We praise the Lord with it. Amen. This What I'm trying to get at is this, this, this word is even in our hymn books. All right. Let's look at the new perverters. NLT. When they came to the place, the skull, notice, they removed Calvary right out of your Bible. So, if you, ASV, same thing, the skull, RSV, the, the skull, NIV, the skull, ESV, the skull, CSV, the skull, and NASV 20, the skull, the skull. So, you know what you're doing? If you have a, if you're, let's say your pastor uses a new translation and you sing about Calvary, you know what you're doing? You're lying because your Bible does not even have it. So don't tell me if you say, I believe my ESV and ASV Bible and you sing on Calvary, you know what you're doing? You're lying because your Bible does not have Calvary. So if you use a new perversion, don't be singing about something you don't believe in, you profess not to believe in. Don't even sing about it because it's not well, even in your Bible. Right. They might believe in Calvary because they heard about it, but they can't prove it from their Bible. Because they try to show someone where Calvary is and it would say something different. Yeah. Now we know Calvary means the place of the skull, but yeah, we want the word. We need the word there because that tells us where it is. So yep, another one. What's another one? Right. Job. And I showed you this earlier. <laughs> this is one of the funniest things. Yeah, it, it's sad because it's sad because they attack the deity of Christ, they lie, they change it, but then they do things sometimes that are just so outrageous you laugh because it makes no sense. This and is it shows no, you that scholarship yeah. is not scholarly. Yeah, that's right. So sad. Go ahead. Now this is Job right here. Okay. Oh, he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Amen. So that, that's something we should do. We should trust in him, and we should also maintain our walk, our own ways before him, all right? Because, you know, we, we should, uh, after we get saved, we should do a good work for the Lord, amen? So that's, amen, that's good, that's perfect. But here's the thing. Notice what these perverters, again, 
perverters do again. Let's see. NLT. God might kill me, but I have no other hope. <laughs> Did it say that? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him compared to... Let's go back. NLT. God might kill me, but I have no other hope. You see, that's what these new translations do. They give you no hope. No hope. Notice. Let's keep reading. NLT. I am going to argue my case with him. What? What? You're going to argue your case with God himself? You know, that's what they're going to do in the Great White Throne Judgment. When the lost people come up after burning for what seems to be over a century, they're going to come up and they're going to try to argue his case, their case. And they're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Look at that's the ASV. Behold, he will slay me. Where in the Bible know. does it say that God killed Job? Thing right there, God's going to kill me. I thought he died because he was a sinner, not because God killed. Him. You see that it, it's like people who, who supposedly did these translations were they even saved? I don't know, buddy. Do you remember what the Bible says about someone? They are given over to a reprobate mind. Yeah. Could people with reprobate minds be behind these new versions of the Bible? No. Well, if you believe Romans one, I told you there were two people that did the NIV that yeah. were what some would say. Line up pretty easy, good with Romans chapter one. So, okay, what else you got? Let's see, RSV. I, I want to keep reading because this this is something here. Behold, he will slay me. I have no hope. Again, these new versions provide no hope. No hope. When you read a perversion like this, this gives you no hope. But he will still defend his my ways before to his face. Wow. NIV. Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. I will surely defend my ways to his face. So you still defend your ways to his face. Ain't that something? I thought all our righteousness were as filthy rags. All right. All right. ESV. That, that is just like justifying your sin before God. Yeah. That's That sounds yeah. horrible. horrible. Though he's claiming, I will hope in him. Okay, so in here he hopes in him. But notice, yet yeah, I will argue my ways to his face. Argue with God? Really? To his face. Man. And you claim, you claim that you're worshiping God with these new perversions? You claim that? CSB. Even if he kills me, I will hope in him. I will still defend my ways before him. NASB. Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Nevertheless, I will argue my ways before him. So notice, NASB user, are you going to argue your ways before God? Good luck, buddy. Because once yeah. that arguing is over, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire if you're not yeah. saved. Good luck with that. And we'll work Good luck out with that, buddy. Good luck. You see? Mm -hmm. So this is what these new perversions come up. Do they say the same thing? No. They don't say the same thing. Whoever tells you, oh, all translations say the same thing. They are liars. Even if they don't know it, they're lying. Yeah. They are lying. Man, it's something. That's something, mm -hmm. ain't it? Second what Timothy. Got? Second Timothy. Okay, let's go there. Two fifteen. This is a great verse that I use sometimes when okay. when I'm teaching to to other students. This, of, you know, sometimes this, is, I, this mm -hmm. is very important too because a lot of people will say, "Well, King James." So the New King James is okay too. Let's yeah. look at the New King James with this too because watch what the New King James does. The New King James yeah. is not okay. And I started this by reading the verse, but we shouldn't be looking for something new. The yeah. people that put out the New King James, they called it the New King James because they wanted to sell it and make money. Mm. So they wanted to make money on something new. Mm. And why would you do that? Why can't we stick with the old? We don't need yeah. the new. And what they did is they took out the these and thous. And, and like we showed you, that totally changes doctrine. The, the New King James is probably one of the worst. And this is one of the reasons why. Look at that word. Go ahead. Yeah. The King James Bible says, says study. To show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Guess what? Both questions are asked uh, answered here. How do you rightly divide the word of truth? Study. And how do you study? Rightly dividing. Amen. Both are answered. Ain't that something? Don't we serve an amazing God who shows us how to study God's word? He says, hey, rightly divided, buddy. There's divisions here. That's what God tells us. Because this if you try to do everything, you're going to get messed up. Go ahead. Dispensations, amen. 
Amen. That's what it is. Dispensations. People, I don't believe in dispensationalism. Well, you, I, I swear, man, that, that word shows up like, what, four times in your Bible, in your King James Bible? And I bet you that even the new versions removed that also. So dispensation, uh, dispensationalism is biblical, you know, and you should study and you should rightly divide. Because if you don't try to rightly divide, you're going to get yourself in a mess. And God himself commands you to do this in the King James Bible. But let's see, does the devil want you to study your Bible? Brother Breaker, does the devil want you to study your Bible? No, no. So let's see oh. what they did in the new versions. Let's see. Let's, let's see. Let's see, let's see by, what they by did. By the way, by the way, that's the only command in the entire Bible to study it. <laughs> so that should be an important passage. Let's see. NLT. Work hard. <laughs> work hard so you can present yourself to God, receive his approval, be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, who correctly explains the word of God. You see, that's what the Alexandrians do. They explain the word of God. Mm. That's what the Alexandrians do. Well, this means this. This means that nobody compares scripture with scripture and rightly divide. Amen. When I see that, you know what I think? That sounds like a works gospel. Like they yeah. changed the verse so much that now it sounds like I got to work hard and do good so God will accept me and I won't be ashamed. That sounds like that whole verse is telling you to do good works, to be saved. That's Get disgusting. Diligent. But that's no. not what it's saying. Paul was writing to Timothy, yeah. telling him, study and work hard, write divisions and teach the truth. So they pervert it so much. Yeah. What else does it say? Give diligence, ASB, give diligence. What does that even mean? Give diligence to present. You see, the new versions just make it harder. They don't make it easier. They make it harder. Give diligence to present thyself to prove unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, handling or write the word of truth. Oh, so you're supposed to handle it just right, you know. And then NLT tells you, oh, just correctly explain it. And the King James rightly divide. Do they say the same thing? Nope. Cuckoo, cuckoo. RSV. <laughs> RSV. Uh, perverters say they say the same thing. RSV. Do, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. That's not, uh-uh. Again, changed it. Okay. So in order to present myself to God as one approved, I have to argue with him. <laughs> so, there you to, go. Excuse me. I got to leave and go argue with God to his face right now. Yeah. And tell there him you, I'm approved. There you go. Try to argue you with know, Any preacher can go through these verses and preach that because that's what new versions say. No, thank you. Yeah. NIV. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. And here it says, who correctly handles the word of truth. NIV. ESV. Do your best to present yourself and rightly handling the word of truth. They remove dividing. CSB. The Christian Standard Bible. The Southern Baptist Bible. Be diligent to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed of correctly teaching the word of God, the word of truth. So here is teaching. So here you're supposed to correctly teach. And in other version, correctly handle, correctly handle. And the other one, correctly explain. <laughs> so th th do they say the same thing? No, they don't. NASB 20, a good godly translation. The NASB 20, let's see. Oh, be diligent. Oh, okay. So they remove study. So don't study your, if you believe the NASB, you shouldn't be studying it. And in fact, if you support the NASB, chances are you're proving that you haven't studied the Bible because you've listened to it. And therefore, that's why you have NASB with you. Because <laughs> you haven't even studied, have you? It's funny. Accurately handling the word of truth. You remove dividing out of there. You see these perversions? Perversions. It gets me riled up. It gets me riled up. And uh, Give, it some more. Give it some more. Keep it going. I'll give you more. I have way more. One, two, three, four. First Timothy. I yeah, got eleven right. myself, so <laughs> we we got to give as many as we can. Yeah, because I, I just can't be asked. I can't be asked. First Timothy six twenty. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of signs falsely so called. Okay, so notice. Beware of science falsely so-called. There's people out there who want to prove evolution. Say that evolution is true. That Genesis is just a myth or should be taken allegorically. 
And they're using science falsely so-called. You see, we can rebuke this, uh, re rebuke this because the Bible tells us, hey, avoid of science falsely so-called. Right? Amen? Yeah. And scientists yeah. are the ones who try to bring this up. So praise the Lord. God gave us the ammunition to fight this garbage. But guess what? The devil doesn't like that. Obviously, he doesn't like that. So you know what the devil is going to try to do? Let's see. Let's find out. NLT. Timothy, guard what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. What did they just do? They removed science out of there. You see, because these perversions love evolution. They love Darwinism. ASV. Oh, Timothy, guard that which is committed unto thee uh, in oppositions of knowledge, which is falsely so-called. You see this garbage? See this garbage? RSV, knowledge. NIV, knowledge. ESV, ESV, knowledge. CSV, knowledge. The NASV 20, knowledge. NASV 95, knowledge. Can you believe this garbage? Yep. This is the garbage that they're trying to teach in, in, in the schools, evolution. And now the Christian doesn't have the ammunition to fight it because they removed science out of there. This is what God commanded us to do. We're supposed to avoid this, avoid this garbage. Now, a, a similar. Well, let's uh, look at some more. Yeah, I am. Go ahead. Uh, We're going to look at some more. But do you guys see? You know, everybody's watching. You're seeing how new versions of the Bible pervert it. And people are saying, well, you're getting angry about it. Well, wouldn't you be angry for someone changing God's word? The word of God is eternal and forever. And who are you? to change what God said. Yep. And I didn't have a chance to go to the three places in the Bible, the three verses in the Bible itself, where it says not to change it. But in Deuteronomy, it says not to change it. In yep. Proverbs, it says not to change it. In the end of the Bible, in Revelation, it says do not change God's word. So all these people that are changing God's word, they're going to be judged for it because they are changing doctrine that brings in confusion. And God yep. is the author of confusion. Now go ahead. Now notice in Colossians 2 8, the Bible says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So the Bible clearly warns us against philosophy. Now, I recently uh, talked with someone uh, some time ago on, and he tried to tell me that philosophy was okay. You know, it's just wrong philosophy. And no, no, that's not what the Bible says. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Mm hmm. Philosophy is downright evil. It's man's way of thinking, man's wisdom. Man's wisdom is wrong. You have to conform yourself to God's way of thinking, not yourself. But that's what they're trying to do. And there's, you know, multiple channels out there, you know, that try to promote this garbage. Oh, you should got to you got to use man's wisdom. No, you don't. You got to go by what God says. That's why he told you to study, right? Well, if you have a perversion, it didn't tell you that. So obviously you're going to resort to philosophy. But let's see what the Bible says. In Colossians 2, 8. Let's see how they try to pervert this. Notice what the NLT says. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies. You see this? So philosophies are just fine, but as long as they're not empty philosophies. You see this garbage? <clears throat> wow. And, and high-sounding nonsense. Boy, that sounds biblical, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. There you go. That come, that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world. Yeah. Oh, brother. ASV, his philosophy. So you know what? Philosophy is okay. Just don't go by a certain man's philosophy. You got to use philosophy in general. Yeah, right. So let's see. Uh, and NIV. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy. So notice... Philosophy is okay as long as it's just not deceptive. Hmm. You see this? Ain't that something? Ain't that something? So that's what you see here. These new versions want to promote your philosophy, their philosophy, and not following on what Christ has to say. They think philosophy is okay, that it's just fine, fine and dandy, as long as it's not empty philosophy. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy. That's what it is. 
Nope. Don't try to play games. Just take God's word at face value. Don't okay. play games. What else? Give us, give us some more. How many more do you have? I have uh, a couple more. I'm pretty much scattered here, but here, let me see. Let me see. Uh, oh, here we go. Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. Okay. Now, this, of course, is one of the most blasphemous ones out there. Mm -hmm. This one is truly blasphemous. This shows us who's behind this. Yeah. Who is behind new versions of the Bible? Yeah. I say it's Satan. Mm hmm And this is one. Go ahead. All right. So the Bible says in Isaiah 14, 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou come down in the ground which didst weaken the nations? Notice what he's called. Lucifer. Lucifer, son of the morning. All right. Now notice. Notice what these new translations change it to. Let's see here. ASV calls him Daystar. Wow. RSV, Daystar. Jesus is the day star and Peter. Yeah. Rising and in your heart. morning star. Oh, you, the morning I'll star is you. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'll show you the scripture where it says day star. Don't worry. Day star, CSB, morning star, uh, star, star of the morning, which is a morning star, star of the morning, which is morning star. Okay, so these these perversions call Jesus the morning star and day star. They, okay. they call Lucifer that. Yeah. yeah. But that's the name for Jesus. Yeah. So go ahead. But that Peter. The King James says Lucifer, son of the morning. New versions call Lucifer the morning star. If you Lord know Peter. your Bible, Revelation 22, 16, yeah. Jesus says he is the bright and morning star. So Jesus is the morning star. Yeah. Why the new versions of the Bible give Satan the name of their title of Jesus? They're doing the switcheroo. Yep, that's, that's right. You get into when you get in the Illuminati, that's what you get into when you get into the secret religions. That's what you get into when you get into Masonry. It all says, no, no, the true God is really Lucifer, and it yeah. changes. And that's what they're doing in these versions of the Bible. They're switching Jesus for Satan. Notice what they do. They call you. Yep. Jesus is called Daystar here, and the Daystar arise in your hearts. That means Lucifer? According to these new translations, it's Lucifer then. Oh, so Lu is Lucifer in your hearts, folks? Apparently not, so. Not in mine. If you have a new perversion, then guess what, buddy? Lucifer is in your heart, according to your perversion. Wow. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Let's look. Revelation. 22.16. 22, 16. Who is Jesus Christ? Morning star and the other versions as well. But who's the morning star? Jesus. Jesus and the King James Bible. Jesus have uh, sent mine angel to testify you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So the morning star, according to King James Bible, is Jesus. Why? Because in Isaiah 14, 12, in the King James Bible, Lucifer is called Lucifer, not morning star. But the new perversions take, uh, take that word Lucifer and change it to morning star. As we've just seen. So the new perversions make Jesus Christ the devil himself. And, and what does the devil want to be? He wants to be God. He wants to be Jesus. He wants to worship. So in the Bibles that he puts out, he has put the name of Jesus in place of what his name is. So people will think it's talking about. Yeah. Him. Let's read, let's read what, what Lucifer has to say about this. Let's see his attitude about this. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit up also upon the mountain of the congregation and the sides of the north. I will sit above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Lucifer wants to do that. No wonder the new perversions call Jesus the devil. No wonder the new perversions make Jesus Christ a liar. No wonder the new perversions make Jesus Christ a sinner. He wants to be like the most high. That is his goal. No wonder he wants to argue to his face. That's what the devil wants to do. He's precisely going to do that in the middle of the tribulation. He's going to he's going to he's going to, he's going to have a full blown war, a war in the middle of the tribulation where he's going to be cast out. He's going to try to argue to the face of God to try to take him over. This you is a perfect fight. time, perfect time to show this. Do you know what this is? What? This is a New King James Bible. People say the New King James Bible is not that bad. Yeah. Watch this. Can you increase the screen? 
Can you increase yeah. the screen? Yes, but tell me what you see on the spine. Wait, that's the... That's a sign of witchcraft. Oh, yeah. That's right. The new King James Version with the witchcraft symbol on it. Oh, man. You still think we're talking out our butts, people? These new versions are perverted by Satan. That's what they are. Now, sorry if we're getting heated and getting a little upset, but we love the Lord and we love the Bible. And it bothers us to see the devil trying to get into and change the word of God. And if you're saved, it ought to bother you too. That's right. Who wants a satanic symbol on, on a Bible? That tells you right there who's behind these versions. Yet people say, but no doctrine is affected. Yeah, except for the fact that Satan steals the title of Jesus Christ for himself mm -hmm. in the NIV and other versions. Now, I'm not angry. I'm, I'm doing what's called righteous indignation. Amen. Amen. With a cause. Amen. With a cause. Now, if you use a, a different version, you can say, well, I'm in danger of judgment because I'm angry. But no, I use the version that says I have a cause. And my cause is yeah. quit changing what God said. You Amen. perverted, wicked people. Amen. Amen. So keep going. All right. So in here, uh, show us uh, show us some of the ones you have, Brother Breaker. All right. First, let me show you the non-inspired version, the NIV. Okay. Um, you read the opening of it, and it says it right in there, in the beginning of the preface of the NIV, where it comes from. And it says in here. Um, the translators made their choice of readings according to the accepted, accepted principles of New Testament textual criticism. Mm. <laughs> Is it right to criticize someone? Is it right to criticize God? Mm. Because that's what Bible scholarship is that puts these new versions out. It's called textual criticism. They're yeah. critics of the Bible. And they stand in judgment of the Bible. And they say, well, I think it ought to say this. And you read through this, it tells us they use the Vulgate. It tells us all these things and what versions they came from. But I'm I'm not going to use an NIV. There's too many things in the NIV that's wrong. That's why I wrote on there, perversion. That's what it is, perversion. I don't use other versions of the Bible knowing that they were put out by people who used the wrong text to yeah. put it out. So let's look at some of mine real quick, and maybe you can pull them up there. And we'll see what they look like. I've got a lot of them. You just did the one on, on Satan stealing the name of Jesus. Yeah. Morning star in new versions of the Bible. Now go to 2 Corinthians 2.10. 2 Corinthians 2.10. And remember, most of the churches you go to, if you went to the pastor and said, hey, uh, is it okay to use any version of the Bible? This is what he'll say. Sure, because they all say the same thing and no doctrine is affected. And that's a lie. You've seen yeah. it here. Second Corinthians. Let's share this. Where is it? Second right, Corinthians right. chapter yeah. two and verse 10. Right here. Look what it says. To whom you forgive anything, I forgive also, for I forgive anything. If I forgive anything, to whom I forgive it. For your sakes forgive I it in the person of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Now that says that we're to forgive others in the person of Christ. All right. Let's look at new versions of the Bible and see. I don't know if all of them change this, but some of them do. Oh, NLT. What does it I say? Do so with Christ's authority for your benefit. But Christ yeah. is a person. Right. But we're supposed to forgive in the person of Christ. Look at the RSV. In the presence yeah. of Christ. <laughs> when will we be in the presence of Christ? At the rapture. The rapture. So are you telling me that I don't have to forgive my brother until I get to heaven? I'm supposed to forgive him now down here in the person yeah. of Christ. But if I go by the RSV, you know what? I don't like you, but I don't have to forgive you until I'm in the presence of Christ. Then I'll forgive you. Do you see that change? Look at CSV. Look at ESV. Supposedly the ESV is the best of all. And it says presence of Christ. Presence what of does Christ? the NIV say? I don't know. NIV in the sight of Christ. Okay. In the sight of Christ. So whenever Christ, we see him and he sees us, we go at the rapture, then we can forgive. There you go. How can anyone follow new versions of the Bible when they change one word? And Pervert. one word is too many. It's too many. It perverts it. Perverts. Now, this, now why, doesn't, 
presence. My wife doesn't like me talking mixed way, but the Bible is like milk, sincere yeah. milk of the word. Where does milk come from? From here. Yeah. So you've got two of them, Old Testament, New Testament. Do you want milk from a holy woman? The Bible says that the bride is, is supposed to be holy and, and without wrinkle and spot. I want the pure word of God from true Amen. Christians who have protected it and kept it. Amen. I do not want milk from a whore. That's right. And the Bible tells us that the false church is Mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and yep. abominations. She's a whore. If you have a newborn baby, do you go to your wife and say, honey, I want you to breastfeed this. And then knowing that your wife is clean, it's going to have a clean uh, yep. milk and it's going to grow. Or do you go out downtown to the red light district and, and ask for the to, for a whore and say, I would like to give my baby to you, whore, so that you yeah. can help my baby grow with your milk. She's probably got every STD in the world and her milk would be tainted. The last thing I would ever do is give a baby to a whore. That's to right. Feed, because I know her milk would be weak. And, and probably full of disease. That's right. Well, the Bible is like milk. Do you want the pure milk of the word yeah. of God? Or do you want the whore's milk? That's right. Yep. All new versions of the Bible. I'm just going to say it. And I don't care if you like it or not. Yeah. The evidence is overwhelming. New versions of the Bible is the milk of a whore. That's right. Yep. And the doctrine is wrong. And it's all to get you into the upcoming one world church and one world religion and satan has been behind these new versions for the last 200 years to be able to get people to funnel into the antichrist church and those who claim to be christians that aren't they'll be getting into that church after the rapture because they won't go now i'm not saying you can't be saved if you're only if you're not only king james there's people who get saved and read another version but then as soon as the holy spirit guides them they get out of that and they get to the king james so you need to be in the pure word uh, pure milk, excuse me, in the pure milk, not in the false milk. Let's look at another one, uh, John 1, 18. Go to John chapter 1 and verse 18. Now, one of the first versions to come out in English was the RV, revised version. And it came out in, I think, 1884. And then they revised it again, the revised standard version in 1901, was it, or something like that. Yeah. This is one of the greatest knocks against the RV and the RSV. And I think they might have since tried to change it to cover up the fact that they did this. But this is the fingerprints of Gnosticism. That's right. John 118, the King James Bible says, no man has seen God at any time, the only begotten son. Amen. Which is in the bosom of the father. He had declared him. Now, what did new versions say? Some Saints. of them saw that it was wrong. So they changed it to son, but some of them didn't. So let's look down there and let's look at the ASV and the RSV and see if they still have what the original one said when they were when they were printed. So here they change it a bit, but they say the but the unique one who is who himself is the, who is himself God, is near the Father's heart. Okay. The, R, the RV and the RSV when they originally came out, it said the only begotten God. Yeah. Just the like the God. Jehovah Witnesses Bible. So I think people made big enough stink about that. Oh, there it is in the NASB. Wow. All right. So, so I have a friend that calls me all the time from South Florida. And he says his friend is in Bible school. And they're telling him in Bible school, the NASB is the best Bible. Look at what the NASB says. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten God. Mm. Is Jesus Christ the begotten God? So how many gods are there? Mm. It is not having sex. And then going around and begetting other gods? That's Genesis 6. That's the fallen angels. Is Jesus yeah. Christ a fallen angel? Well, the Gnostics taught something similar to that, that he was just a, a lesser fallen angel god. Hmm. So what kind of person would use a New American Standard Bible and run around and tell you that's the best version when it makes Jesus Christ a begotten God instead yeah. of God begotten in the flesh? Not right in the head. <laughs> that's heresy. That's heresy. So yeah. let's look at another one, Daniel chapter 3 and verse 25. The King James translators were so smart, they knew that context demanded how you um, how you um, translate. Yeah. And the context demands that this be translated as son of God because it's talking about Jesus in, in the Old Testament in his pre-incarnate state. Jesus had a body in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord. And Daniel 3.25, he answered and said, Lo, I have seen four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. 
and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Who is the Son of God, Fabrio? Christ. Jesus. Christ. All right, let's look and see what new versions say. This will surprise you. Yeah. Let's see. This will surprise you. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted. I see four men unbound walking in the fire, unharmed, and the fourth looks like a God. <laughs> no, it's God manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ, before he was born. But it's yeah. still Jesus Christ. Now look at ASV. And the yeah. fourth is like a son of the gods. Mm. The son of the God. Now, that is sick to call Jesus Christ the son of the gods. So he is not God. He's just, he's a begotten God like Hercules or one of those Greek mythology people. It says in the RSV, son of the gods. NIV, son of the gods. Any person who's truly saved and is a Christian would be offended by that. Because yeah. Jesus Christ is not a son of the gods. He's the son of God. Why would you go with an NASB that says a son of the gods? Someone who put that version out doesn't know their Bible yeah. and doesn't care about Jesus Christ being the son of God. That's attack on the deity of Christ being the son of God. Right. Let's, go, right. To Let's go to Acts one sixteen. This one's not that strong, but it's still interesting. Yep. Men and brethren. All right. Men and brethren. This scripture must needs have been fulfilled. And it goes on. So who is there present at that time? Men and brethren. Men and brethren. Any women there? No. No. All right. What does it say in new versions? Especially in the NIV. Let's go especially to the NIV. Brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, uh. There's no sisters there. This is different than at the beginning. It talks about there were a bunch of people together where there were some women, but then something happens and then it's only men together. Yeah. And then that's when he talks. Why would you change that to brothers and sisters? Nowhere in the Greek text does it say woman or sister. ESB, brothers and sisters. That's the Christian uh, standard Bible. Somebody's changing the word of God. Yeah. He's putting in whatever they want. Oh, I want girls to be there too instead of just guys. So I'm going to change it. No, you don't go change the word of God. Let's go to 1 Peter 3.21. We could do this all night, folks. Amen. Have you ever sat down, if you use another version of the Bible with the King James and read them back and forth verse by verse? That's all you got to do. Because if you do, you'll find out so many versions take out whole verses of the Bible. Yeah. They pervert the word of God. So look what it says in 1 Peter 3.21. The like figure wherein to... Even baptism does also now save us. And then it tells you not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. So it's not water that cleanses us. The baptism in water is a figure of salvation. The yep. like figure. All right. Let's go to the other versions because they take out the like figure. Mm. And when you read this verse in other versions, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like you're saved by water baptism. And that water is a picture of baptism, which now saves you. <laughs> what? You're saved by water, uh, ASV, which also after a true likeness does now save you. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you. Baptism, which corresponds, no. Baptism is the like figure of what yeah. saves us. What is it a figure of? It is a figure of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And that's what saves us through faith. Why did they take out the like figure? Because they're following the perverted Alexandrian text. Yeah. Um, let's go to another one. Let's go to Acts chapter yeah. 7, verse 48. I could do this all day. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I know my Bible. I will not be deceived into using perversions of the scripture. <laughs> I'm not going to use false versions of the Bible that attack Jesus Christ. It says in Acts chapter 7 and verse 40. Um, let's see. I wanted 40. Six. Let me see. I'm going to look it up real quick. The verse that I want. Got and it says Jesus. Which is the verse that says Jesus? Uh, chapter 7 and verse what? I don't know. Uh, let me see. I'm looking it up now. Acts 7. Now this one's very interesting. Acts 7. 45. 745. I must have written it, written it down here. Yeah, that's a five. I just didn't see it. When you get older, your eyes aren't the same. Yeah. All right, Acts 7.45, look what it says. Which also our fathers that came 
after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom drove, whom God drave, drave out before the face of our fathers unto the days of David. Yeah. Okay. It says brought in with Jesus. Amen. What is the context? The children of Israel leaving Egypt. And guess who was leading them? If you read your Old Testament, it was the angel of the Lord was leading them out. Yeah. So yeah. here we have, I believe it's Stephen saying, when they went out and Jesus was leading them. Amen. Look at what new versions of the Bible do. Now, by the way, every Greek text says Jesus or Jesus. We don't have one Greek text that says Joshua. They all say Jesus. That's right. What do new versions do? That's new it. versions go, well, I think he meant Joshua because that's who it was. They don't understand. No, 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 no. He's telling us it was Jesus back then, just that's as right. Jesus is today. So that's their idea of translation is, uh, well, it wasn't Jesus. It was some guy named Joshua. Must be a mistake in the Bible, so we'll change it. It was not a mistake in the Bible. It was Jesus yeah. who existed before the foundation of the world and who was there in the Old Testament as the angel of the Lord. NLT, Joshua. Hmm. ASB, Joshua. Look at all these. Every one of them says Joshua. They found no text anywhere Joshua. on the face of the earth. Joshua. That says Joshua. And they Joshua, liars, liars. They're changing the word of God. The reason it's Jesus is because he's telling us, hey, Jesus has always been. Mm. And he was there in the time of Moses and Joshua. Yeah. And the correct word is Jesus. Amen. It sickens you to see them thinking they're smarter than God and them saying, well, it was Joshua. Oh, he got it wrong. It was really, well, we'll fix it for him. No, God wanted the word Jesus because that's who it was, Jesus. Yeah. All right, let's look at Luke chapter 4 and verse 4. Look at how evil new versions are. Luke 4, 4. Yeah. It all boils down to this. Do you believe what Luke 4, 4 yeah. says? Luke 4, 4. And Jesus answered him saying, it is written that man not, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Okay. So if that's what the Bible says, I want to live by every word of God. Can I do that in a new version of the Bible? Let's see. They say, as it is written, you know, a man should not live by bread alone, period. They <laughs> take out but by every word of God, don't they? Oh, man. Who could you know, do such a thing? Sometimes when uh, I have church service, after I'm done having church services, me and my pastor, you know, we'll stop by a restaurant and we'll eat and they give us bread and butter. And sometimes I joke around and I say, hey, you know, it's good that they brought butter because the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. And, of course, we joke around. We know that I'm leaving out a verse or two, but, hey, that's what they're implying. They're implying that, hey, you might, you got to have some butter with there also. <laughs> because but you can't by every well. word of God. They leave out, but by every word of God. In the verse that right. says you, you shouldn't live. You, you, you can't live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Uh, even the NASB, too. Yeah. Bread alone. All right, let's go to another one. Go to Mark 9, 44 and 46. Where's Mark 944 and 946? Mm. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Mm. Verse 48. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. It says the yeah. same thing in each one of those verses. Yeah. All right, let's look at new versions. Which verse? Uh, 48 or let's do 44? Let's do 44. 44. Okay. Where is it? Uh, King James has it. Where is it in the other? <laughs> footnote, footnote, footnote. Oh, nothing. <laughs> removed this, it. These verses are completely removed in most new versions of the Bible. Look at verse 46. If you go through and look at new versions oh. of the Bible, they take out whole verses. Footnote, footnote, footnote. Take that something. Let me, let me show you in the NIV here. Mark 9. Let me show you what they did. So how could anyone get saved and read one of these Bibles and never go, well, how come that verse isn't there? And never question it, and never look into it, and never study it. Are they even reading their Bible? I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Amen. I'll have to make it bigger. Which verse? Let's see. 9, 40. This is 943 here. So if it will do any sort of, uh, no, it doesn't want to. But you see, it says 943 and then yeah. 45. Where's 44? 
And then where's 46? They just go through there like the verse doesn't even exist. And if you know how to count and you're reading through there, you go, you go, what, what, where? Did I ever tell you when I met the president of Guatemala? Down in Guatemala, there was a guy that was president for a couple of weeks and then he resigned because a coup was taking place. But I got to meet him one time and I asked him, what version of the Bible do you use? And he goes, man, I'm struggling because I was using the NIV, but it takes out a whole verse of the Bible. I said, well, let me give you the right Spanish Bible. He was so thankful because he didn't like a Bible that took out verses. Let's go to another one. Yep. Let's go to Acts 16, 24. Acts 16, 24. Acts 16, 24. Now, this is in some Bibles and not in others. But guess what? <laughs> in in these Bibles, sometimes they'll put it in, but they'll put it in brackets. Mm, that's it. That, when they put something in brackets, that's them saying, I don't believe that that. Oh, I said Acts. I meant Romans. Excuse me. It should be Romans 16, 24. That's when when you see in brackets in a in another version of the Bible, that's them saying we don't believe that was part of the original. Mm. So we, don't, we don't think that should be in there. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Uh, yeah. This is Paul, and Paul says that in almost every one of his epistles. But notice so if he says it in every other epistle, except for Hebrews, then um shouldn't he say it in Romans? Yeah. But look at all these versions, they take the whole verse out. The ones that leave it in, they put it in brackets saying, we don't believe it should be there. That's what brackets mean is we don't think this should be here. Yeah. You don't think that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ should be with us? Mm. Is that is that who these people are that put out these new versions? They hate God. They hate the truth. They hate salvation. They think you water baptism saves you and they don't want grace to be with you. That, that almost sounds like a Catholic. That's it? right. Let me show you another one. I guess this one will be. The last one that we might have one more after this, but go to Romans chapter three and verse 25. Romans chapter three and verse 25. Salvation is through faith in the blood of Christ. Romans 3 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Yeah. If you have a King James Bible. I mean, you don't have to go back to the original from 1611, but if you did, you would see right here in this to the reader that it says to the reader through faith in his blood yeah the king james translators knew and understood and believed that we are saved through faith in the blood do new versions teach faith in the blood do those that put out new versions teach mm. that you're saved by faith in the blood let's look what is here's king james whom god has supported to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Let's look at new versions of the Bible and what they say. NLT. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, comma, shedding his blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in past time. Where is through faith in his blood? Mm. Now look at the ASV, how corrupt, how evil, how wicked this is. If I was the devil, I would not want people to see salvation is so simple that it's through faith in the blood. I would pervert that. And that's what he did. ASV, whom God set forth to be a propitiation, comma, through faith, comma, in his blood. <laughs> that, so he's your propitiation through faith, and it's all in his blood. That, 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 that makes it distracting. That makes it, you don't understand what he's saying. What is the next one? RSV, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. And it says the same thing in the ESV. So you can receive his blood by faith in, I guess, anything else. Yeah. It's not saying faith in the blood alone. What's the CSB? God presented him as an atoning sacrifice in his blood, received through faith. Faith in what? <laughs> whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. What? Why don't you say through faith in his blood? Because that's how we're saved when our faith is in his blood. Yeah. Why would you change that? Why would you do that? Because yeah. you don't believe it's through faith in his blood and you try to water it down. You try to change it to where you can't understand the gospel. Man, what a shame. Hmm. Well, Somebody else sent me one more. I don't know if it'll show up on there, but let's try this. Daniel 2.43. Daniel 
this one's interesting and we could do this all day there's a lot more we can go to but we got to close here in a minute we got to take some questions but daniel 2 43 the king james bible says toward the end even as iron is not mixed with clay all right you know what iron is you know what clay is you know that iron and clay don't mix what do the new versions say is it iron and clay let's find out somebody emailed me this so they'll be happy that i mentioned it all right all right so they have iron clay there was one that changed it to ceramic instead of clay i wonder if it shows up i don't know what version they were using but it says iron mixed with ceramic it must be a different verse there's two verses there that talk about iron and clay so i must have got the wrong one uh, there's one with pottery <laughs> Pottery. Combined with pottery. Pottery is something man makes out of clay. Look, fired clay? No. No, it's talking about clay. It doesn't mean clay that's worked by a man yeah. and fired as pottery. But anyway, one of them, one of the new versions says ceramics. Yeah. I think that's so weird. So you, you got all these new versions. They're all oh, messing everything up. What does the Bible say in Ecclesiastes 8 4? Where the word of a king is, there is power. So why would you want anything other than the authorized King James Bible? Authorized means an authority authorized it. And the King James Bible was authorized by the king, King James. And God used him to authorize the translation in a time in history when they had the right text on the table. In a time in history when the smartest men probably that ever lived. Most of the King James translators, they, they spoke nine to ten languages. Yeah. And they put it together, and they wanted to do it correctly. And it was for two reasons, to have the closest translation and to be read in churches, in which it had like a cadence to it. As you read the King James Bible, it's easy to memorize. Some of these new versions are not easy to memorize. Yeah. Um, what does the Bible say, John 3? Uh, is it? What is the verse that says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Uh, that's all one syllable words except for one so easy to memorize uh, there it is. and yet nowadays new versions make that hard to memorize yeah all right so, look, look at that in the king james bible he that hath the son hath life and, and he that hath not the son of god hath, hath not life. life wow so, that's all one syllable words that are easy to read and easy to memorize wonder what new versions do to that they probably make it harder all right. Whosoever has the has the son has life. Whoever does not have the uh, God's son does not have life. That wasn't easy for you to read, was it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, here it makes it easier. King James. Yeah. Of- so the King James, there we don't even have time to get into in the King James how um, there's the verses and the numbers and there's oh, there's yeah. just uh, uh, the Bible code. The biblical numerics yeah. that are perfect. Uh, yeah. I have this guy that calls yeah. me from time to time, and he used to work in the Navy as a code breaker. And he reads the King James Bible. He tells me, hey, you know how many times this word's in the Bible? He says, it's amazing. It's this many times. And it's, yeah. and it's just, he finds the Bible, or the King James is like a code. God put together that book. Amen. And yeah. people are trying to defeat that book by giving you a watered-down version of it yeah. that does affect doctrine and does mess things up. So how could anybody go with anything other than the King James Bible when it's the one that God put forth for us today? That's just ignorance. I'd love to finish there and end up, but I'm sure we have some people with some questions. So if you have some questions, please ask your questions. Put the at Robert Breaker sign and then ask your question and we will see if we can put that up there. Um, And, you know, we need to know what the Bible says. Someone says, oh, wrong one. This is the one I wanted to show. Oh, it's moving so fast. We did First John 5, 7. So when you go back yeah. and watch this, video, you'll see that. What does it mean, faith in his blood? Well, we're saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. What is our faith to be in? In the blood atonement of Christ. Amen. I am trusting in his blood, knowing that it was shed on my behalf for my sins. I'm trusting that to save me. So that's... That's important here. Someone says, my Baptist church uses the ESV, and I told my pastor that KJV is the best, and he said it isn't. Well, ask your pastor to watch this. Amen. Yeah. If you honestly can be in favor of all these verses that we looked at that are against, 
the the deity of Christ. Uh, someone says, so there's no errors in the King James. I don't believe there are any errors in the King James. There Peter are. Ruckman wrote a good book called Problem Text. And all the so-called errors that people bring up, he shows you how that's not an error. And usually it's someone who's not studying the Bible. And when they bring something up like that, it, it shows they haven't read the Bible. God gave us Psalms 12, 6, and 7, saying yeah. that he would preserve it. And I believe he did. I believe he did. Either God was truthful that he said he preserved his word or he didn't. And if he did preserve his word and if there are errors, then why are you wasting your time going to church? Why are you wasting your time using your Bible if it has errors? Either God said what he did or he didn't. The choice is yours. Did God tell you a lie or not? So someone so, asked, what is the correct Texas Receptus? What is the Texas Receptus? It's all 5,000 manuscripts yeah. uh, in Greek that is put into one through the process of collation. Now, over time, there's been people that did it. Erasmus put together his collated of the 5,000 texts. Elzever, uh, Scribner, um, you know, Biza, uh, and all these. There's at least five different ones. Um, the one you get today that's called the, the Greek Texas Receptus, you can get from here. You can get from the Trinitarian Bible Society. But this is Scribner's. And so this is what's so amazing. A lot of people think that the Texas Receptus is better than the King James. Mm. I believe the King James is better than the Texas Receptus because what the King James had was all the texts on the table and yeah. they used them all to bring the King James. So they used the majority text reading. When they did, they said, okay, we don't need a Texas Receptus. So we stuck with English. So everyone was like, well, where's the Texas Receptus? Well, there's El Zebra, there's Erasmus, there's Visa. So this guy named Scrivener. He back translated the King James into Greek and then called it the Texas Receptus. And this is what many people use today as the Texas Receptus. And guess what? He didn't agree with the King James. So in about 100 places, he changed it. So yeah. you don't even have a true Greek text, Texas Receptus today. The King James is it and where it's at. He should have done it exactly as the King James. So you can't run to this and try to correct the King James. The King James, God put it all right there. And it's like, we don't need this anymore. You don't need to learn Greek. That's if you right. have the King James, you can believe it because that's what it said. But if you want to look at what they call the Texas Receptus, you can get this. This is the best place to get it. A lot of other things that I could go into. But the Texas Receptus was all 5,000 manuscripts together. But the yeah. King James had more than that, way more than that. And uh, they were able to put together God's word in the King James Bible. Yep, that's right. right. Yep, I saw the question about which TR. God's word is perfect. I believe the King James Bible is the perfect word of God. Um, here's someone. The Jesuits infiltrated and tried to ruin the KJV. Um, <laughs> no, the Jesuits tried to destroy the King of England and blow him up and, and stop the translation of the King James Bible because they hate the King James Bible because it true it shows that their latin vulgate is wrong yeah and uh, that's called the guy fox um plot the 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 plot of guy fox and that's november 5th and guy fox was a catholic who tried to kill those that were putting together the king james tried to kill the king james bible and uh they did their own translation called the dewey reams translation but the vulgate is corrupt someone says first john 5 7 has been altered it's been altered in the King James. And here's another falsehood. Yeah. The oldest so-called text that they say we have are the Vaticanus and Sidiaticus. And they say they're 400 to 600 years after Jesus. They say, well, we don't have any manuscripts for that. No, all we have is copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies of copies. They go all the way back to the early apostles. And that's the Texas Receptus. These ones we have that they call the oldest are the most corrupt. And that's the Vaticanus and Sidiaticus. And they don't have the first John 5, 7 completely. But you know what we do have? We have 100 years, 200 years, 300 years after Jesus. Early church fathers quoting 1 John 5, 7, That's exactly right. like the King James Bible. So what does that mean? That means that they had 1 John 5, 7 in their original copies. That's right. So it has always been the word of God. It always has been the word of God, and it always will be. And Amen. we have it in the King James Bible. Some people try to say, well, the King James added that. No, they didn't. They put it in the text because... They found church fathers quoting it 100 years after Jesus. 
and these so-called older texts, the corrupt Vaticanus and Sidiaticus, they didn't have it. Why? Because those are the corrupt texts where the Gnostics took it out because they didn't want to believe in the Trinity. Duh. I mean, you know, yeah. if you just yeah. think about it, you would get that. So, yes, First John 5, 7 is correct. Yep. What books exactly. do you recommend for people to read and research about the King James? Well, it's hard to find them because so many people uh, follow the lies of the scholars. So Dr. Ruckman has good books on the King James. There's a lot of good books out there about why King James only. And you can go to the KJV1611.org. So mm -hmm. www.kjv1611.org. And that's the Ruckman's old bookstore. And, and there's a lot of good versions yeah. on, on the, good the King James Bible. Gail good Ripplinger's book, book yep. is wonderful. AVpublications.com, uh, I think it is. Gail Ripplinger is amazing. Is amazing. Yeah. Good books on that is the quote unquote errors of the King James Bible. That's a good one. And Manuscript Evidence, Christian Handbook of Manuscript Evidence by Dr. Ruckman. Those two are really good. And his book on problem text is great to show you why there's no errors in the King James. All these people make up these errors, but they're not errors. If you simply read it, you say, oh, that's not an error because it says this over here that proves it to be true. Um, old school Bible Baptist. Hey, Roy. Roy hey. said it perfectly. What we believe as King James Bible believers is the Holy Spirit guided the King James translation. Amen. He gave us his perfect word in the English language. And I believe that. And yeah. I can stand up with my Bible and say, I believe 100% God said. And I can do what they did in the Old Testament. I can say, thus saith the Lord. And most pastors in America and around the world, they can't do that because they don't believe that their Bible is the pure word of God. And um, they have doubt. Well, you shouldn't doubt if God said he'd preserve it. Then I believe he did. Yeah. Um, what's a good channel that teaches the KJV? Well, here, here's a good time for you, Fabriel, to tell people what your channel is. My my channel is KJV Believers. Um I don't know. I'll try to type it into the text into the, Oh, I turned off my phone. Well, either way, but basically my channel name is KJB believers. That's K J B not V, but B uh, believers. And there I talk about the King James Bible. I upload sermons and Bible studies, cool topics. And I even have a video on, on this topic that we're going through. It's like one hour and 50 minutes long. And we also have a, uh, and my channel also have a video on the King James Bible. It's just a translation. I show you some advanced revelations of the King James Bible that you'll only find in the King James Bible and not in the originals. So that's a good one. <laughs> so KJB Believers, that's what it's called. And KJB Believers. Yeah. And here Roy brings up again, there's uh, 66 chapters in the book of Isaiah and yeah. 66 books in the King James Bible. It's uncanny how. Those chapters line up with the books. I don't have time to get into that, but it's pretty amazing. The Bible, the King James, is a supernatural book. But when you get into other versions. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's wrong to get rid of a perverted Bible. I really yeah. don't. I think you should get the right Bible. I wish we had time to get into which Bible in Spanish, because this is all about Spanish as well. But we don't. Someone asked, what denomination are you? Well, I'm an ordained independent Baptist. But first and foremost, I'm a King James Bible believer. <laughs> that's what I call myself more than anything. Because some Baptists aren't. And uh, that's sad. Uh, again, here, old school Bible Baptist keeps giving us good stuff. Yes, it, you don't have to read Greek or understand Greek. But if you did and you read the Greek texts, I said text because there's more than just one, of uh, 1 John 5, it makes no sense if you take out verse 7 or half of verse 7. It doesn't work. The context and everything it has to be in there for it to be grammatically correct and uh amen people remember peter ruckman because he stood on the king james yeah. bible and he's probably the one of the greatest people in these last days that fought for the king james bible yeah. Yeah. when many people were turning away from it if you have a question put it in there at robert breaker and uh Will children be raptured if they're under the age of accountability? And that's the age when they know right from wrong. But if they reach the age of accountability, they need to get saved just like everybody else. Yeah. Someone asked, were there humans before Adam and Eve? Um, there were no humans before Adam and Eve. I don't believe that. Adam and Eve were the first. Yeah. Uh, someone says, Beyond the Fundamentals has a great study on why the King James only. Okay, I don't know where to get that, but um, look up that if you want more information. 
Um, what are your thoughts about the Thomas Nelson study Bible? I don't know. I know Thomas I Nelson it. isn't the greatest, yeah. but as long as you get a King James Bible, that's that's good. But um, yeah. is, is there good notes in their study Bible? I have it. I've read through it. It's just like I read the commentary. It's just if you note, if you read the very beginning of the Thomas Nelson study Bible, and I have, they say that their their notes are mainly centered on how it relates to this world. So, oh, wow. so they they basically, it's just tradition. Like the notes are just plain tradition. I don't, I barely agree with any of the notes of the of right. the Thomas Nelson. They don't, even in their notes, there's no cross references in there. You know, for example, like a, a good reference Bible, it would be. Ruckman reference Bible because even when he has his notes, he puts cross references in there for you to check them out. And the Thomas Nelson, they barely do that. And the same thing with the Common Man's. Common Man's has a plethora of references, and um, in the Thomas Nelson Center Column references, most of the references don't even make sense. I went to, uh, for example, the Thomas Nelson Study Bible. I have the second edition. I go to the Rapture, the the First Corinthians fifteen, uh, uh, fifty five, where it talks about our Rapture of the Church. They have a center column reference to Matthew 24. And I'm like, that's not talking about Matthew 24. That Matthew 20, the one in Matthew 24 is for the Jews. So they have a center column reference and they try to make all raptures together in a center column reference. I'm like, it makes no sense. You know, you're not you're not gonna see that in uh in the common man's or or also in the Ruckman reference Bible. Right. Yeah. Um, this person's asking, what about the new King James? We talked about that. This is a new King James Bible. And look what symbol is on it. That's yeah. a witchcraft symbol. Why would you do that? And it takes out the word study. It takes out scholar even. It takes out. There's a lot of changes in the new King James. That's why the new King James is not God's perfect word. It's, it's very different than the King James. And uh, that's sad. Um, Gail Ripplinger has great books on this topic. She's she's a wonderful lady. I've talked to her on the phone several times. I yeah. love Gail Ripplinger. She's a real blessing. Um, so you need to get her book, New Age Bible Versions. Okay. It, good thing we are not under the law because we can't eat Cuban sandwiches. Okay. So, if we, <laughs> okay. so there you go. What do you call it? Uh, I don't know if I know. There's a name for a Cuban sandwich. Uh, Cubano, I guess. I don't know. Or not a Ruben. Cuban sandwich. <laughs> Amen. Mean, why, why are you guys fran about Francis Bacon? Or, okay. Do you guys know about Francis Bacon or King James involvement with witch hunting? Yeah. So Francis Bacon set up in a tower in London and he studied after under some strange warlock person. And so some people have a theory that Francis Bacon uh, did some of the the drawings in the King James Bible and, and he hid codes in the text. Well, I don't think he changed the word of God, but he might have used the format of it or something. There's a weird guy named Ryan Plaster on YouTube and you can watch some of his videos that are that talk about that. But um, witch hunting, um, King James was very much against witchcraft. He wrote a book about it and uh, he would literally burn witches at the stake because he knew what they were. So, yeah, it's interesting. I've got his book on demonology by King James. It was pretty interesting. Is the amp is the NIV? Nope. The NIV has problems. The Amplified Bible? Nope. That's got problems. Yeah. And, yep. It's you want the authorized King James because that's the one yeah. that comes from the true text. Remember, all other versions come from that text right there. That's called the GNT4. It's also called the Nestle Allen text. And again, for those that came in late. The people that put this text out, they tell you right there where it came from, Westcott and Hort. And then over here, they tell you the Vatican helped us put this together. Yep. <laughs> and it is not to be considered definitive as definitive. You cannot consider new versions of the Bible as true words of God that are perfect because they're not. Yeah, that's so, right. Here's a good one. I need to be looking up for Jesus to come back. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so what about people in different languages? Well, you know, many languages, they translated directly from the King James. I think that'd be the best that you can do yeah. um, if, if at all possible. Um, what else? They say the Apocrypha was in the original King James. And that's a great, a great thing to talk about here real quick. 
here's the King James Bible. And in those days, they had a law that you couldn't print the Bible without the Apocrypha in it. And so that's why when they printed the King James, they put the Apocrypha in it. But they did something different. Older Bibles had the Apocrypha all throughout the Bible. Here's the old 1569 Spanish Bible. And let's see if it has uh, the preface in it. Of, of the, I think it does. I'll try to give you this real quick. Nope, it doesn't have a table of contents in it. But all throughout this um, other Bibles, the the uh, Apocrypha was all in there in, in between other verses and other books. Like here's Ezra's, all right, uh, Ezra, third Ezra or whatever. But what the King James did is they said, we don't believe in the Apocrypha. There's a lot of errors, a lot of mistakes. It's very Catholic. And they put it in the middle in its separate section. And they write in here why they think the Apocrypha isn't. The true word of God, because there's a lot of errors and mistakes in the apocryphal books. And so they did something that others didn't. They separated the apocrypha. The only reason they put it in here is because you had to at that time. That was the law. And they said, no, it's not the right. And so as people begin to print later, they took it out. They took it out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, someone tells us this here. Uh, what do I think about the. River Euphrates drying up. I think that's amazing. The Bible says that's going to happen. And uh, it's amazing. They're finding some interesting stuff, too. And uh, Wiccan symbol. Yep, that's what was on the, the New King James Bible. So yeah. why would you want a New King James Bible when the witches are saying, yeah, we like this version? I mean, is that mm -hmm. it all points to Satan as the one who's trying to corrupt the word of God. Yeah. That's right. And here's a good one. Have you compared the King James with the Geneva Bible? Yeah. The Geneva Bible is okay. It's just not the King James. And the, one of the reasons they did the King James is because the Puritans who did the Geneva Bible, they translated a lot of it to line up with their doctrine. They were biased in their translation. And that's why they wanted the King James, because they said, we want a translation with no bias in it. And if you look at the old Geneva Bible, it is so full of notes that on some pages, there's more notes of man than there is the text of the Bible yeah. of God. So that's one of the reasons I don't like the Geneva Bible. Um, let's see. And, you know, a King James Bible, you can get them for cheap. Amen. No, excuse. I mean, you can go to a dollar store and get them for under two bucks. And it's just, yeah. it's just, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Someone says, did you mention... Revelation 13, the mark in the right hand. Oh, New yeah. On the right hand. But it says in, in the King James. So that's yeah. interesting. To I recently had a conversation with a, uh, with an associate of mine, and we we're talking over that. And, and I told him, hey, the King James Bible says in the right hand. But you know what the, perver you know what the perverters are going to do in the future? What the Pope is going to say in the future? They're going to say, hey, it's not in, it's on. So it's okay. So it's okay to take this take this shot right here. It's okay to take that, you know, take that mark of the beast, you know. It's going to be fine because in our Bible, so it says on. So as long as it's, it's not on and in, you're fine. So that's what they're, they're going to try to do. Yeah. Someone that's asked, it. where did Cain get his wife? And that's so easy to answer. Um, remember, Adam lived to be 969, was it? How old was Adam when he died? Like he lived 30 something. I don't know. Yeah. Methuselah was the oldest. So if you're living to be 900 years old, there's plenty of time to sit around and wait for a woman to be born that you can have as your wife. So yeah. no doubt Cain probably didn't get married until he was 200 or 300. And by that yeah. time, there were enough women around. So if you're living long lifespans, there's plenty of time for Cain to get his wife if he yeah. just waited a couple hundred years. Um, yeah. What else? If y'all are breaking fellowship with believers over translation, you miss the point of loving the weaker. And that's right. Sometimes we come across Christians that don't use the King James Bible. Yeah. I don't attack them. I don't put them down with love. I try to explain to them, hey, this is why you need to get a King James. Otherwise, you're going to get a Bible that's tainted. You're going to get a Bible that's got false doctrine in it, and it will most likely lead you astray. So it's better that you get the pure word of God. Get the key, pure word of God. Yeah. Um, uh, 
I don't know what that means, but I don't know why you would hate the King James because it is easier to read. And the more you read it, the, the easier it is. I've talked to so many people that told me, man, when I got in the King James, it was just like God speaking to me because I just know that this is God's pure word. So you don't have to wonder anymore to find out if that's what really what God said or not. You can actually take it at face value. Yep. You know, you don't have to doubt. Don't doubt the word of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. So, well, yep. This person settles. Uh, people don't want to read. That's the problem. Well, the problem is people don't want to study. And how people can use new versions and say it doesn't affect any doctrine. Well, we found out today. Yes, it does. And how they could say, um, you know, they're all the same. They all say the same thing. That's someone who's not reading. And if they're not reading it, no wonder they're saying that. And I would really like them to study this out for themselves. And I've come across so many people over the years that they say, I'm King James only. I say, why? They say, well, I just, I had three Bibles and I read them all together, verse by verse. And I just kept going, what? That's not what the King James says. And they found out for themselves that only the King James yeah. says it right. And all the other ones have doctrines that are changed to where Jesus is a sinner. It's so sad. This person says it perfectly. Too many of today's Bibles have been changed by scholars who think they know better than God. And that's what they, that's the problem. They think they know more than God. Yep. And of course, yes, that's right. The NIV is missing a lot of words, but the new King James too is missing a lot of words as well. Yeah. Amen. Someone asked, should, should you leave your church if the pastor is using a perversion? Well, I personally wouldn't sit under somebody that uses another Bible. Yeah. So you've got to figure that out for yourself. You've got to pray about it. Go to them first. Try to show them. If they all use the same Bible, wow. When you're sitting in church and the pastor says, turn to, and he reads, and they're all reading the same thing, that's awesome. But when you get up there and the pastor says, turn to, and he starts reading, and everybody goes, what? What verse is that? What? That's, not what? that's utter confusion. And everybody has a different translation, and they're all looking, going, what does he say? It all says something different. God's not the author of confusion. So, it's like that King James Bible song. Yeah, I, I sang that years ago. Yeah, I love that song. But um, the best thing to do is find a good Bible-believing church. You can go to independentbaptist.church and look up for a good church, and hopefully you'll find one. Amen. But it's Amen. all about the blood. It's all Amen. about the book. King James Bible, and it's all about the blessed hope. Amen. Yeah. Well, this guy got the gist of the whole conversation. All modern translations are based off corrupt Alexandrian texts written by Gnostics. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, once you get a hold of that and understand that, how can you use a new version? So if you have any questions, put them out there quickly. I'm probably losing my voice here, so I'm about ready to, <laughs> to, to stop here. Yeah. Amen. There's a New King James Jerry Falwell version, but look at that. It's based on Alexander, Alexandrian text. No, we don't want any Alexandrian text. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's sad. That's sad. <laughs> yeah. If um, only people could get a hold of this, you know. Yep. Is this look up KJB Believer on YouTube? That's Fabriel's. Yeah, KJ, um, KJB Believer. Yeah. And you can find verses that aren't in new versions and put them down in the comments on YouTube so that other people can see all the places. Yeah. Someone that left their church because they were convicted because their church used the ESV. Yeah. If you're saved, it grieves your heart to hear someone read from another That's version because you know, did God really say that? Or did some guy translate and say that that's what he thought God said? No, I want the King James because then I know that's what God said. Amen. We love you guys too. We appreciate We hope this has been an edifying to everyone, has been edifying, because that's what we try to do. We're not trying to attack or put down or make fun of or mock. or We just want you to know God gave us his book, and we want every word. And that brings me to the verse. Look up that verse, um, if you would, and let's show that to everybody. It's in Acts 11, 28. I'm going by memory here. Can you look that up? Yeah, sure. Acts 11, 28. I think it's 26 or 28. Yeah. Nope. Christian in Antioch. Okay, that's okay. That's that one. But the one I want is a Luke. 
eleven twenty six, I think. Let's see. Yeah, Luke eleven twenty eight. That's what I want. Go to Luke eleven twenty eight. So this this is. I mean, it all boils down to this. How much do you love the Lord? And do you want a blessing? You know, all these people now. I want to be blessed. I want to be blessed. Okay, but he said, "Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it." Yeah. All right. If you want the word of God and you want to hear it and keep it, do you keep it though? If you're using another version, are you keeping the word of God? Are you going to be blessed? I mean, yeah. Hmm. Yep. Um, well. Just tuning in, okay. You're gonna have to go back and watch the whole thing because the ESV is yeah. one of the worst, one of the worst. And the a 1960 takes out 64,000 words. Yeah. And it's uh, any other book suggestions? You got any ideas on what suggestions to read books? I tell people just read the Bible. Yeah. Uh, other books, like theological books. I mean. Yeah. I mean, like. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Doctor Ruckman's books are really good. I like his commentaries. I like his uh, his stuff. It's just pretty good Bible believing content. What I like about him is that he'll when he gives his commentary, but he'll list like twenty verses to prove it. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, dude, it's 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 extensive. That's what I like about him. So he's one of the greatest te Bible teachers I have ever seen. Really, like if I if I had mm -hmm. to choose one of the greatest, of course, other than the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is number one. But uh, other than that. Uh, Dr. Ruffin is one of the greatest Bible teachers I've ever seen, really. Like, he makes everything so simple to where, like, a common man can understand yep. and, and solves and so called contradictions that people make up. He clears them up big time, comparing scripture or scripture. And he teaches you to do that in his commentaries, compare scripture or scripture. That's the best way. Now, me personally, I, I, I don't read them anymore because I don't need them because <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Right. I, well, I go back, you know, and check out here and there to say, hey, I want to see what he thought about it, you know. Now, of course, right. they're just commentaries. They're, his, his writings are not inspired. There's some, yeah, is there some, some, he's, some stuff he has wrong there? Yeah, sure. And it takes discernment. But I'm telling you, I believe you're going to receive a blessing if you have some of his commentaries because he goes through, through yeah. the internet. And you can go to, go to kjv1611.org and get those. Do you think there are dispensationalists that use modern versions? Well, there could be people that are dispensationalists that do use other versions and maybe they just never thought of it. So I hope if they love the Lord and they love the Bible and they love dispensations that they'll think about it and they'll change to the King James. Um, why are so many against the KJV? Because it's truth. Amen. I mean, that makes sense. Amen. That makes sense. And then as old school Bible Baptist says, and I'm sure he got this quote from Ruckman. If you think you found a mistake in the KJV, it's a mistake in your understanding. Amen. 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 So go back, those that have recently joined us, and watch this from the beginning. We give you a ton of verses and new versions and how bad they are. How bad they are. Yep, that's right. Um, are there any Bibles prior to the KJV that are good? Well, the KJV is the seventh in English. Isn't that interesting? You had the Bishop's Bible and the Coverdale and the, I forget all the others, the Geneva Bible, and then you had the, did I say the Bishop's Bible? and and they were all pretty close to the same. But uh, God chose number seven. And just like yeah. it said, in Psalms 12, 6, and 7, purified seven times. So isn't that interesting? The seventh English Bible, King James. And it's the perfect. And uh, I went to Bible school at Dr. Ruckman's. Yeah. And uh, someone mentioned Gene Kim. He went to the same Bible school, for those that don't know. And uh, I'm sure he has some good stuff on why King James only as well. Who thinks that witches should have been killed? That was King James back in the 1600s. And they used to burn witches at the stake in the 15 and 1600s. So that's who I was talking about then. I'm not saying do that today. <laughs> okay. We're not in favor of killing people. We preach against that. Um, but we do want to see them get saved. Amen. <clears throat> my website, of course, thecloudchurch.org. And then my old website is rrb3.com. I have a lot of information on there about the Spanish Bible as well. I'll go ahead and put that in the comments. And I would like you, if you speak Spanish, to, to look up YouTube, my video on the history of the Spanish Bible. Can you still buy an old King James Bible? So, yes, you can still buy one of these. This is called a facsimile edition of the 1611. And it's a facsimile. But um, in 1768 or 9, they changed the spelling. 
So it's not like they change verses like they do in new versions. They just change the spelling because in Old English, an F is an S or an S is an F and a V is a U and a, or a U is a V and things like that. And, um, you know, you look at this, it's kind of hard to read. Sun is S-O-N-N-E. Well, I change it to S-O-N. So if you want a, a facsimile of the original 1611, you can do that. Otherwise, just go down to Walmart or someplace and buy KJV, King James Version. And yep. you'll have what we all use, which is the, the spelling that's updated. It's not they changed it. They just changed it to the way we spell the words today. All right, that's about it. I'm getting tired. Yeah. You know. I spoke with my pastor recently and he told me try to keep the live stream short and I'm like uh uh <laughs> I tried but I had to get this all out today too you know yeah amen amen this is gonna be as long as it has to take <laughs> so someone said so him killing witches was that approved of God well he was the king of England and that was part of his responsibility was to stamp out in his realm evil and satanism so that was all part of the the government of the time again not something that we do today yeah. but uh, just so you know yeah great question who why would anyone want a bible with errors yeah amen yeah amen hey brother brother bob militello i know him pretty well saw him a couple years ago in church good guy um my first KJV was a Gideon's Bible I found. A lot of times you'd go to a hotel and you'd find a King James Gideon Bible. Now they've changed to the new King James, unfortunately. Mm. But you can still find an old Gideon Bible. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks for being with us. And, um, you know, thanks, everybody. We enjoyed you being here with us. Amen. And uh, I'm going to go get ready for bed <laughs> Amen. It's late for you thank you for being with us and please um feel free to comment down in the bottom after this is over and uh if you can think of some more places where new versions are wrong or have false doctrine or an error or are missing a verse or a word put them down in the comments because we need to be informed and we need to tell people hey there's only one book god only wrote one bible and that's the King James, as far as I'm concerned. And if you use other versions, that's that's your business. But I don't want you to use something that's been messed with by man. If God is what he claims to be without error and perfect, he would have given us something without error and perfect. And if you're using a version that's that's not perfect and has error, then how could you honestly think that God gave you that? Yeah. Why wouldn't you want the one that is perfect? Amen. So that's why we're King James only. Thanks, John. Amen. John was with us what a week or two ago on our last one. Concealed with the Holy Spirit. Yep. And it's Ephesians 1 13. When we're saved, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. All right. I guess we'll cut off there. Thanks. You got anything else you want to add, Fabrielle, real quick? No, just you know, God gave us a book. God preserved his word. So either you have it in your hands or you don't. The, is the book that you have in your hand, is it the preserved word of God or is it not? Remember, God's word is without error. So if it's not the King James, which one is it? All of them have errors except the King James. God preserved his word purified seven times. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Okay. King James only. We'll see you all next week. All right. If I do one next week, it might be a week after. Um, I was on with uh, a couple of guys uh, YouTube on Thursday, and I met a guy named Jason. So I want to do a YouTube with Jason yeah. soon. We'll pray about that on YouTube. I want to do a live stream with Jason. I'm yeah. getting tired. All right. So we'll talk to y'all later. See you all. Get in the book and read it. God bless y'all. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye. Amen. Amen.